The Miami Hurricanes' hopes for an ACC division title are alive and well, but they've got no room for air. Starting quarterback Kyle Wright is hurt, so that means Kirby Freeman will lead the Canes today. Welcome to ESPNU College Football, presented by Allstate. The Miami Hurricanes at home in the Orange Bowl for the second to last time today. A win gets them bowl eligible. North Carolina State in last place in the ACC, but they've won two in a row. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the Orange Bowl alongside former Canes coach Larry Coker. I'm Clay Mappick. Miami, after a bye week and a win the week before, feeling pretty good. They control their own destiny, but they're without their starting quarterback. The question is, can Kirby Freeman keep it going? Well, both Kyle Wright and Kirby Freeman were, were elite 11 quarterbacks, nationally recruited. Today is Kirby Freeman's day. He's a little more creative than Kyle Wright. He's won before, won the Boston College game last year. He won the bowl game last year, and especially two weeks ago, the last three completions in a drive, touchdown pass to win the Florida State game. One key to the game today, Coach? Well, turnovers, turnovers, and more <laughs> turnovers. The NC State is, is turning the football over, and again, that's something that they've got to be corrected. You can see in the first six games of the season, a minus 17. The last two games, a plus one. So they're doing a lot better. Everything has really changed over the last couple of weeks for this North Carolina State team. North Carolina State won the toss. They deferred. Miami will receive to start it here. Here's Ryan Hill to return this kick. Got over the 20, spun down at the 25-yard line. And that's where Miami will start first down and 10 after that 14-yard return. Mr. Freeman making his third start of the year, coming off a nice comeback performance against Florida State. Now he's named the starting quarterback over Kyle Wright for the first two weeks, but was inconsistent and was benched. He's getting a chance here to redeem himself late in the season, Larry. Well, consistency, that's the key. He's, going, he's made big plays. He's made big bad plays to, for, the, uh, for the other team. So he's got to be consistent. I know that's what Patrick Mike Nix wants to see. On first down and 10, the first play of the game for Miami. Javaris James dumped for a loss down at the 14-yard line. Willie Young, the left defensive end, coming in to make that hit. Well, the Canes have one of the youngest backfields in the country. James is the old man of that group as a sophomore. The Miami line is centered by senior John Rochford. He is a first-year starter. He hails from Linwood, New Jersey. So now a second and 22 here, Coach, for Miami on their first possession. Well, negative plays. You can't have negative plays. I know that's certainly not the way that Miami wanted to start the game. And this is going to be a big play on second down. A little inside handoff. That's Darnell Jenkins from his wide receiver position. Runs it out to the 24-yard line. It's going to bring up third down and long. The Wolfpack defense has produced 12 of their 21 sacks this season in the last two weeks. Defensive end Willie Young, he's already made a big play. He had three sacks last week against Virginia. Strong side linebacker Nate Irving, a redshirt freshman, making his second straight career start today. And there have been a lot of changes in this North Carolina State secondary in recent weeks. Dewan and DeAndre Morgan, their brothers. DeAndre recently promoted to a starting position. Mike Archer's really going to be competitive as far as starting positions are concerned, and I think that's important. And the Wolfpack players know that. Archer is their first-year defensive coordinator. Penalty flag is going to blow this dead. It looked like the snap got away from Freeman anyway. Prior to the snap, illegal snap, number 62 in the offense. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. That's really a good break for, for the Hurricanes because, again, an errant snap, and, you know, that would have been another negative play, and... You know, you'd rather have a penalty than a negative play from a sack because at least you get the down over. Still third down now. And third down and 17. Just underway here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Big game, especially for Miami in the ACC race. Freeman out of the gun. He is being chased. On the run, threw it away, and there is another penalty flag down. It looks like Miami's going to be forced to punt unless this goes against North Carolina State. I believe there's an eligible receiver downfield, which, uh, which looks like uh, looks like me. I think 71 was downfield uh, ineligible. Derek Morris, the, the right guard. Ineligible receiver, number 62, will going downfield. Penalty declined. 
Fourth down. They missed 71. He was downfield also, so a lot of guys. It's supposed to have been a screen. The ball was thrown past the line of scrimmage. You can have people downfield for the ball that's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. That ball was thrown past the line of scrimmage. So coming on out to punt for Miami is Matt Bosher, Darrell Blackman, one of the ACC's top return men. Back to return at his own 37. This is going to be good field position here to start for NC State. Fairly short kick. It bounces at the 46. Takes a little bit of a Miami roll, and they're downing it at the 41, and that's where North Carolina State will start a 39-yard punt for Bosher. As we take a look at the ACC standings, we said that Miami controls its own destiny. Why? Because they still have Virginia Tech and Virginia on their schedule. They need to win out, but they could win the Coastal Division. Well, it's going to be difficult, but they can win those games. Miami has 17 starters back from a year ago. Only Boston College has 17 starters coming back, so they have good players, and they have a chance to win these games. It's going to be tough, but they can do it. Here's a look at Daniel Evans, the redshirt junior from Raleigh. It's been a weird year for that guy. He began the season as the starter, lost his job, got it back due to injury. Running play for Jamel Eugene. Gets it out to the 45. Now, Evans has thrown for 1,140 yards and 10 touchdowns on the season, but nearly 700 yards and six touchdowns have come in the last two weeks, Coach. This guy is on fire, but so is the team. Well, they really are, and Tom O'Brien and his staff, they've been together, for the most part, about 10 years. They know what they're doing. They're an outstanding coaching staff. Tom O'Brien, a great head football coach. And this team is going to get better as the season progresses and as the years progress. Good situation here. Second down and five for NC State. Under center, Evans, five-step drop. Looks over the middle. Now pressure. Running, throwing, and it's knocked away. Good job in the secondary by strong safety Kenny Phillips. One of the best safeties in the country. There's a little example of why. I think you're right, Clay. I think he is one of the best safeties in the country. And you're right, that shows why. He's, uh, he's uh, in the line of some of the great safeties that Miami has had. Backs and receivers for NC State. We've already seen Eugene carry the ball on the line. It runs the gamut. Freshman to seniors, they're getting better as a unit. Evans has been hit just three times in the last two weeks. Again, this team has really started coming together in recent weeks. Third down at five for NC State. Their first possession. Again, dropping back Evans. Again, throwing on the run. The pass is short and some pretty good coverage by the linebacker, Colin McCarthy. It was intended for Marcus Stone, the tight end. So good at play there for NC, uh, or for Miami, rather, and now North Carolina State has to punt. Well, I think, again, a good series by the Miami defense. They've done a great job. They've very, been very aggressive. Again, created 20 turnovers as opposed to 21 in 13 games last year, 20 in just eight games this year. Tim Walton, the defensive coordinator, has been very aggressive, and really, I really like what I see out of the, uh, the Hurricane defense. Both defenses have done a good job to start here. Penalty flag down as Bradley Pearson is in punt formation. Brian's at a snap. False start. False start. Number 14 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. I think Miami feels pretty fortunate to uh, have such a such a uh, a bad first offensive series and, and have an opportunity to get the ball back. And it may not be a good field position, but we'll see on this return. They're going to be helped out by that penalty. Now Greg Cooper is standing at the 20. High kick. He's backing up. Actually, that's Chavez Grant. He takes it at the 11-yard line on the fair catch. A 48-yard punt for Pearson. Miami has the football again when we come back. A beautiful day in South Florida. And we're back after this. Absolutely gorgeous weather here in South Florida. Sunny, 77 degrees. Hurricane Knoll stayed away from Miami this week. And a cool front has moved in. It's absolutely perfect here at the Orange Bowl today. And Miami's got the football back. First down and 10. They got it at their own 11-yard line. Kirby Freeman getting the start today for the Canes. Flips it back to Javaris James. He's got a running room. Out over the 20 to the 21-yard line and enough for the first down for James, the sophomore, who is averaging 157 yards a game rushing. He picks up 12 on that carry. That's a nice job for the right of your screen. Nice toss. Good job by the fullback. Nice job here by James. And again, he's an outstanding running back and, and the cousin of, uh, of Edron James. Great running back now for the Phoenix Cardinals. 
James has been bothered a little bit by a sore neck. On first down, here is Freeman, dumps it off short, and in and out of the hands of James. I think they're trying to give Kirby some uh, some uh, confidence and some easy throws, and again, you'd like to see some players make some plays for him like that. Bring up second and ten. Freeman beat Marshall in the opener. You and I were here for that game, Larry, but then looked real bad against Oklahoma. Subsequently was demoted. Freeman was the starter, got demoted. Kyle Wright was the starter. Now the injury, now Freeman back with his opportunity. He has to take advantage of it. Second out of 10, cutting it to the outside. That is James again. Got it to the 27-yard line, a gain of five. DeAndre Morgan, the right cornerback, came up and knocked him down. And it's going to bring up a third and about five situation. Well, third down is going to be good. Third down, I think, with 29% uh, uh, completion ratio on third down. Well, Randy Shannon, the first-year head coach of the Canes, told us they got a lot accomplished during that bye week. Sometimes they come along at a great time. Well, they do. Sometimes you get players healthy. You get to work on fundamentals. You have a chance to get better. Again, they look like a little bit rusty on offense right now but uh, with a week off, but uh, they'll get in rhythm. Freeman has time in the pocket, throws it deep downfield, incomplete. And another punting situation for Miami. Let's go to the studio for the first time and Mike Gleason. Play. All right, Khalid, thank you very much. You know, how come we're not hearing about him well, for a Heisman bit, candidate? Well, especially being from the Ohio State University. <laughs> I know it. Because that's uh, that's that's a b obviously a big time program, and he's done extremely well. Number one in the country, like Glee said, 22 touchdown passes. That one lands. Now Miami thinks they've got it, but I don't think North Carolina State touched it. No, I don't think they did. No, they didn't touch it. They may replay this, but they probably don't need to because uh, it wasn't touched. The fair catch was called for, but the NC uh, Blackman was not able to feel the feel the football. You see Blackman. But again, he gets away from it. Wasn't touched there. I think this will be NC State football. And Darrell Blackman is a savvy return man. Again, one of the ACC's best. Averages about 12 yards per punt return. Just stayed away from that one. And it was the smart thing to do as you take a look at Tom O'Brien. Also, in his first season as head coach. Came from Boston College. And is trying to turn this program around. Jamel Eugene is going to be stopped for a short game, maybe two yards before Kenny Phillips came in to wrap him up. Eugene, after injuries to Tony Brown in the opener and then Andre Brown a month ago, North Carolina State has turned to this guy who has 356 rushing yards, including a career-high 112 in the upset of Virginia last week. They don't know yet if he can be an every-down guy. They're finding out just on the job. And it's Eugene again straight ahead to the 45. Well, they really don't know that. And again, they've had two of their best players with Baker and Brown, both injured early in the season. So they've gone to the number three running back. They've had a lot of injuries at in NC State. And again, the, the NC State coaches haven't complained about that, but that does, certainly does affect their football team. This is a new season for North Carolina State. It started in their bye week three weeks ago. And in the new season, they're 2-0. That's how they look at it. Nowhere to run on that play. It's going to be a loss of one for Eugene. And boy, the punters are getting a workout here early on. They really are. They're, they're running the zone play. And, and the key thing in a zone play is you cannot have penetration. The Miami defense did a great job of penetrating, causing Eugene to have to bounce the football and pursuit caught up. It's really a good play by the Miami defense. This will be the second punt for Pearson. Averages 37 yards per kick. Gets off a good one here. Chavez Grant lets it bounce, takes a North Carolina State roll to the 15-yard line, and that's where Miami will have it. It's homecoming here at the Orange Bowl. Beautiful weather to be enjoyed by the Canes fans. We're back in Miami after this timeout. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Michael Irvin 
of the greatest Canes of all time on hand today for homecoming. Michael was also Randy Shannon's roommate, so uh, he has a double reason to be here. Yeah, they're real tight. Handoff here for Javaris James. Actually, that's Deron Thomas getting a carry uh, here early on. And that probably confirms the fact that Sean Bray McNeil, the usual number three running back, is a little hobbled today. So Deron Thomas getting an early carry. There he is. I'm a little surprised Greg Cooper is not getting that carry because normally he is the number two guy coming in. And, and Deron Thomas is a, good, is a good football player out of New Orleans. It's either been a sluggish start for both offenses or a real good start for both defenses. We have seen four punts already. Neither team has been able to complete a pass. And we've seen a, a lot of running the football so far, but not a lot of holes. Not a lot of holes. Now, I think they're just trying to feel their way out. And, and uh, I think this is pretty good for, uh, for NC State. If they can keep it like this and bounce around and kind of the little rope-a-dope technique. I think they'll get their confidence built up playing on the road in a tough environment. Miami 0 for 2 on third down conversion so far today. They're going to try and pick one up here on third down and one. They're at their own 24 yard line. Kirby Freeman, the quarterback. They're only 29% on third downs, too, for the season, which is not, not very good. Gonna pitch it back. This is Thomas again. Wow. Slippery hips, and he finds his hole to the 30 and driven out of bounds inside the 25 yard line finally by the strong safety Javon Walker but a huge run 54 yards for Thomas on that carry. Again that wasn't like you draw it up that's all recruiting and all, all just being a football player there. Watch Deron Thomas here one move two moves three moves four moves and now he has speed he has track speed. Big play for the Hurricanes. You're right. This does come as a little bit of a surprise to see Thomas, considering James and Cooper have been kind of the one-two punch for the Hurricanes. Yeah, actually, Cooper is the leading rusher for the Hurricanes at this time. That is the longest run of Thomas's career. They're going to go back to the ground game. This is the fullback, Jarrell Mabry, pulling his way inside the 20. So Miami is now in the red zone where they are... 77% on the season, 61% scoring touchdowns. Well, again, they need touchdowns here. Drill Mabry is a, a fullback out of Georgia. He's trimmed down to, to a mere 275 pounds. So he, <laughs> he's, a, he's a real, real fullback. He's on the seafood diet. Yeah, he's huh? on the seafood diet. Sophomore out of Columbus, Georgia. He's a big guy. He's on the sideline right now. James dots the eye in the backfield. He gets the quick toss. Finds some room on the outside. Cuts the corner. Driven out of bounds by Dewan Morgan. But it's an 11-yard gain. First down and goal for the Hurricanes. They had Chris Zeller, number 88, in at the fullback, at fullback position. He is the, probably one of the best blockers they have on the football team. 88 coming through. And again, nice run by James. You know, they're really liking this toss play. They're trying to get the uh, Wolfpack defense to run. And that tends to wear a defense out as, as the day goes on. You see Kirby Freeman. He's orchestrating this drive. The sixth play of the drive coming up. Thomas is back in there at tailback. A penalty flag comes in to stop this. I think they had too many men on the field, and uh, they had one leave the huddle. Again, you can't break the huddle with 12. Richard Gordon... Uh, came off and, uh, there is no foul the foul would have been for 12 players breaking the huddle however there is only 10 on the field no foul oh that's a tricky one <laughs> uh, their arithmetic was that's screwed up. exactly right I, I think uh, <laughs> that's a tricky one you don't want to do that too often though try to fool the officials they don't like that so first down and goal here from the six yard line Miami has gotten to this point running the football entirely they haven't completed a pass yet. They go back to Thomas, dives inside the five. And I'll tell you what, I like what I see from Thomas here early on. He has very quick feet. He has good speed. I think the thing you see, too, is they're really trying to take some of the pressure off of Kirby Freeman and put it on the rest of this football team. They need to take ownership. It's not just on Kirby Freeman. Let's, let's make Kirby Freeman look good. Let's block for him. Let's run the football. And then the passing game will tend to open up. 95 yards of offense for the Hurricanes so far today, all rushing. 
Second down, goal to go. And still in the first quarter. Again to Thomas. Now this time he is hit in the backfield and hit hard by Willie Young. Young is coming off the best game of his career against Virginia last week. He had seven tackles and three sacks. That was a huge football game for North Carolina State. And you can see Willie Young's acceleration, his explosiveness to the football. That's a, that's a great job by uh, Willie Young. He is a sophomore out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And that's another reason that North Carolina State has reason to be fired up. There are a lot of Florida natives, especially South Florida natives on this team. There will be a lot of parents for North Carolina State players here in the Orange Bowl today. Third down and goal from the five. Freeman in trouble. Spins away from a tackle, stays on his feet. Now looking to the end zone. He looks like Fran Tarkenden. Throwing deep and out of the end zone. Smart play after Freeman figured out he had no chance. Well, he had no chance. And to take a negative play there probably would have been out of field goal range. So and now at least they have a very makeable field goal. Again, red zone, not disaster, but red zone failure from the standpoint of not scoring touchdowns. Freeman now 0 for 4 throwing the football. Well, coming in now to attempt a field goal is Darren Daly. Francesco Zamponia has been demoted the last couple of weeks. Daly on from 22 yards out. Out of the hold of David Strimple. And it's good. So Daly now two for three on field goal attempts this year. Three nothing Miami. Miami gets you on the board first. The big play in that nine play 80 yard drive. This 54 yard run from Duran Thomas in North Carolina was worried about the big plays. Well they really were the first games of the season. That's that's what was their nemesis. So many big plays so many missed tackles and defensive coordinator Mike Archer's really especially during the open day really trying to, to stress the fact that you know, that's something that, uh, that they can't have. The last two games have been really really cut down on the big plays. 54 yard run by Thomas the second longest of the season for Miami. He now has nine carries for 55 yards. North Carolina State set to get the football back here. From the six yard line. This is Darrell Blackman. He is slippery. Out over the 31 and that's where the Wolfpack will start. Let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason. Well Clyde we mentioned the fact Wisconsin's won the last three trips into the horseshoe trailing 7 nothing. P.J. Hill's not playing so they have to pull out the bag of tricks. Ken DeBow punt formation finds Paul Standring the backup punter that leads to a field goal at 7-3 Ohio State. Duke scores first on Clemson. Yeah Thaddeus Lewis throws his 18th touchdown as you see the defender in the zone comes up leaves that end zone spot open for Aaron Riley for the end route touchdown. Duke 7-3 play. Well, every game is big for Tommy Bowden and his staff at Clemson trying to win their third straight today. Here is Evans on first down, comes short, and a nice catch underneath there by John Dunlap back in the lineup after missing the Virginia game with a sprained ankle. He is a senior out of Hollywood, Florida. He's a guy that they consider a go-to guy, and they're happy to have him back. Well, he is a go-to guy. He's here, from, again, from South Florida. He's an outstanding linebacker. A lot of people recruited him to play linebacker, but a great wide receiver, made some great plays throughout his career at NC State. So second and five. North Carolina State has had good field position throughout the day so far. Their average field position has been to start at the 40. And they're getting close to the 40 yard line here after that run by Jamel Eugene. They've been getting some third and shorts, but they have not been able to pick up the third downs. So that's the thing that's really hurt to NC State. Here's a look at Tom O'Brien, and he said about Jamel Eugene that he always goes full speed in practice. And if you play hard in practice, you're going to play in games for Tom O'Brien. Uh, that's exactly right. He's very, he, he knows what he wants and how he wants to get to it. And, he and the staff are all on the same page. You have to perform. As they say, you don't have just the right to play. You earn the right to play. North Carolina State 0 for 2 so far on third down conversion attempts. They're going to pick up the first down here. Evans. Donald Bowens coming off a career day against Virginia last week, but there is a penalty marker on the play. Legal man downfield. 
Now Donald Bowens had 11 catches last week against Virginia. This was his best uh, game of his career. Ineligible receiver, number nine, was covered up and went downfield. Five yard penalty, remains third down. So it'll be a third down at about seven. This is from last week. Bowens, 11 catches, 202 yards, and two touchdowns. The best North Carolina State receiving game in four years. Well, that's hard to believe, but that was a great performance by, by Bowens. And I think last week, he was not a starter in that game last week. He's the starter this week. Third down at six. We're hearing from this Orange Bowl crowd for the first time, and it looked like the left guard moved. That's Mears Green, the right guard, the former walk-on, now a starter. Ball start. Number 69 offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Well, both Green and Heppy move. Kalani Heppy's actually going to be the one uh, that's nailed for the infraction, a fifth-year senior out of Bealton, Virginia, North Carolina State now, getting hurt by mistakes. Got a little bit out of sync, and, you know, it was third down and one, now it's third down and 11. So those mistakes you can't make, unless you're just a lot better than the other team. North Carolina State is not better than Miami. Out of the gun. Evans, down he goes. Colin McCarthy. The sophomore strong side linebacker drills Evans for a loss of eight. That's a great job of Colin McCarthy, but this Miami defense, it's a defensive end. Calais Campbell and Eric Moncor. Look at the pressure coming from outside. Taraz McRae inside. Yeah, no place to go. No place to go for the quarterback. Great job there on, the, on Daniel Evans. Miami in total defense ranked 28th in the country. Doing a good job so far today. Chavez Grant watches this one roll out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. And you see field position starting to switch now. Field position now in favor of the, of the Hurricanes. Well, college football on ESPNU continues this afternoon as the Maryland Terrapins take on the North Carolina Tar Heels. Saturday afternoon, college football presented by Allstate on ESPNU coming up at 345 today. For more information, go to the net, ESPNU.com. Both teams, one and three in the ACC. Maryland still has bowl hopes. They're at four and four coming into the weekend. Well, the, this conference is, is very even. A lot of even teams. And, you know, it's, I know it's cliche, but any team can win, and I think that's been, been proven. Javaris James is going to run here. Actually, uh, that's Darnell, Darnell Jenkins. Jenkins. And he is pulled down from behind by Littleton Wright. I talked to Marcus Mosley, the wide receiver coach, before the game. And he's been very, very pleased with Darnell Jenkins' his progress this year. He's their leading receiver. He's already graduated, done a great job catching the football. And again, normally with the reverses and those type things, they like for Darnell Jenkins to touch the football. Very explosive. Player of the year of South Florida when he graduated. He and Kyle Wright hooked up on a 97-yarder against North Carolina earlier this season. He's a big play kind of guy. James picking his way out over the 45-yard line, down at the 47, a gain of four. And DeWan Morgan, the junior free safety, made the stop. Now, Morgan, number seven, he's the veteran of the secondary. He moved from strong safety to free safety when defensive coordinator Mike Archer shuffled things up in that defensive backfield. It, it, it really has helped us. They've gotten a lot better. And again, they're creating turnovers now. They're not turning the ball over as much. And, and they're just becoming better as a football team. They're buying in to Tom O'Brien in this, in this system. Low snap. Freeman does a good job, but throws it, and it's intercepted. There was nobody downfield for Freeman. He just threw it up and away, and it was picked off by Miguel Scott. And Miguel Scott brings it back to the 38-yard line and a smattering of boos here at the Orange Bowl. They're not happy with that decision by the junior quarterback, Kirby Freeman. Well, there's a miscommunication there. The receiver went in, and, and, and Kirby uh, obviously assumed he was going down the field. I think you can see the cut outside. Uh, there it is, going across with a post route. Again, Freeman thought the, the receiver was going, going deep. And again, obviously a, a disastrous miscommunication. 
And Miguel Scott needed a confidence builder. The three-year starter recently demoted. We talked about that secondary shakeup. He was a victim of that. Freeman now 0 for 5 with an interception. Here's Darrell Blackman. Sheds a tackle. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe a yard more before he's escorted out of bounds. We well, talked about the field position. Now it's switched back in the favor you know, of the Wolfpack. And uh, that's, that's very important. Now they have to do something with it. But that's, uh, that's very important for this, this football game. We talked about turnovers being a problem for North Carolina State. Well, there is a costly early turnover for Miami. Well, even in the Florida State win, Florida State had five turnovers. Miami had four. They were one less turnover, which allowed them to win the football game. That's, that's too many. A little inside handoff to Eugene. Plucks ahead for about three yards. College football on ESPNU continues tonight with two games. First at 7:15 Eastern. This is going to be exciting, folks. A Big East matchup. Ray Rice and Rutgers taking on number 13 UConn. Then at 10:30 Eastern, the Jackson State Tigers taking on Alabama A&M. Saturday prime time on the U. Evans on the run, caught. And drop, but the official is going to say he was down at the 47. That is Dunlap again. Well, that's been interesting for the first down here, the, the, wherever they get the mark. And it's really a great play by, uh, by Evans and a nice concentration by Dunlap. Yeah, this is going to be close. They may need a measurement here. They're definitely going to measure, and it is very, very close. This is very important for, for NC State to, to keep this field position where they want to have it. Well, we talked about North Carolina State, how it's kind of been a rebirth the last few weeks for this team. They used that bye week a few weeks ago, and since then they're 2-0. and Well, again, they, they refer to it as a new season. All things are past. Everything's new. They're playing much better. The kids are buying into it. I think the coaches have learned, too, what can our guys do? What can they do? And they know that, and now they're building on those things. Mike Archer simplified the defense. Tom O'Brien has simplified the offense along with Dana Bible and they're doing things now that they know how to do and can do better and they just got their first first down of the day and it wasn't easy no it wasn't and it may be the last play of the first quarter we're gonna have to wait and see Miami basically has 10 starters back on this defense a very experienced defensive football team that is going to do it. Well, it was a defensive battle in the first quarter. You would Miami, almost predict that. Miami in their second to last game here at the Orange Bowl, leading 3 0 over North Carolina State. We're back for the second quarter after this timeout. Orange Bowl moments. We're going to revisit some of those throughout the day today. This is the second to last game for the Hurricanes here in the storied building. Who can forget 1984? He would be the Heisman Trophy winner, Doug Flutie, to our buddy Gerard Phelan in the end yeah. zone. And uh, I'll tell you what, Boston College has not beaten Miami since that game. That's Jamel Eugene going nowhere. Colin McCarthy having a great first half. Another big loss. We'll call it a loss of eight on that play. Colin McCarthy was injured a great deal last year as a true freshman, but you just knew he was going to be an outstanding football player. And he's had a great season, not just a great, great half today. He's played well the entire season. He is, in football talk, he is a football player. Out of the gun on second and 18. Evans to the sideline. And that's going to land incomplete. He was trying to hit Daryl Davis, but he was covered pretty well. The true freshman out of Leland, North Carolina. Now, in the first quarter, there was a lot of punting and not a lot of passes being completed. In fact, Miami did get on the board, but they did so without completing a pass. Well, they're running the ball. They, they want to give Kirby Freeman, get him in a rhythm in the game. They're going to have to throw the ball some, obviously, the rest of these games. But I think to get him in a rhythm and settle him down just a little bit. Now he's got a lot of press coverage. They're going to need to hit some of these fade routes, these deep routes to these wide receivers. Play action to the right. Comes underneath trying to hit Marcus Stone, the tight end, and that just looked ugly. Well, that was ugly, and, and I'll tell you, the, uh, the, the tight end, Anthony Hill, probably their best offensive football player, the tight end for North Carolina State, is, is injured. But again, that's just a poor pass, and... and, and I think you have to put the responsibility on Daniel Evans there. He's got to throw the football better. 
Bradley Pearson on to punt for the fourth time already today for North Carolina State. Gets it away. And this is Chavez Grant. He's going to let it bounce at the 26-yard line. It takes a roll inside the 10 down to the 6. And that's where Miami's going to have to start. Unless uh, this penalty flag means something otherwise. I believe it's a penalty against uh, Miami's defense for, uh, for hands, illegal use of hands. And holding, yes. So this is going to go against Miami. It's going to be rotten field position here for the Hurricanes. Well, they're talking about it. Maybe it was touched by a, by a player. We'll see. Now, NC State touched the touched the ball upfield, and so it's probably going. To, there's probably a beanbag to mark the touching of the ball. And then they'll mark off the penalty. Well, if it's where it hit, it would be around the 26. We have a hold by the member of the receiving team, number 87. That will be enforced from the spot of first touching Miami ball. That was Khalil Jones, number 87. <laughs> Lace up your skates for college hockey on ESPNU tomorrow as the Army Black Knights take on the Holy Cross Crusaders. Hockey on ESPNU coming up on Sunday at 4 Eastern. For more information, go to ESPNU.com. And it's been a good start for the Miami Redhawks under head coach Enrico Blasi. They are out to a 6-0 start, number one in the latest poll. Well, it's uh, 78 degrees here. You don't think about hockey in South Florida, but the, the Panthers in the past have been pretty good. <laughs> Come on, it's always always a good time for hockey. <laughs> Darnell Jenkins tripped up in the backfield. And that's going to be a loss of four on the play. We've seen Jenkins carry the football quite a bit here early on, but he really hasn't had much success yet. No, he's that type of player. He's nothing, nothing, big play. And Darnell was actually took the direct snap at that time, the, the old Arkansas stuff they call their wild hog formation. And, and uh, again, the direct snap and the direct sweep. But trying, Miami is searching a little bit. They really haven't found anything right now to hang their hat on. Jenkins again out of the quarterback position. And again, nowhere to go. Good pressure by the North Carolina State defense. That is going to be a loss of seven on the play. Well, we, we've seen the tosses to, to Javaris James and, and uh, the runs from Jerron Thomas. Those look pretty good. This really hasn't been very effective for him. You know, it's been negative play, negative play. Again, I think you'll see them go back to the tosses to James, the handoffs to Jerron Thomas. Those, those are the guys that need to carry the football for the, the, uh, the majority of the time. Well, in the backfield for the first time today is Greg Cooper, the true freshman out of Memphis. He's been great this year, hasn't carried yet. Now he's got the football, and he's got some running room. He is dangerous when he gets into space. He gets it back out to the 19. A gain of 14, but it's still going to be fourth down and long, and Miami will have to punt. I wonder why we haven't seen Cooper up to now. Maybe it's something that the coaching staff saw before the game they didn't like. I think maybe not before the game, but maybe he uh, something uh, throughout the week. Maybe he hadn't practiced as well as he needed to. Maybe something like that. But you can see what Miami needs to do. They need to hand the ball to, to Cooper, to, to Deron Thomas, to James, to get something established. Blackman at the 42. He calls for the fair catch as he's backpedaling, and they're going to spot it at the 38. That's where North Carolina State will start after that 42-yard punt from Bosher. 12.09 till half, 3-0 Miami. ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. Greg Cooper finally got into the game. 14 yards on that run puts him third all time in freshman rushing yards. Of course, that big year from Javaris James came last year. Now, better late than never for Cooper. Well, it really is. They're going to need uh, Greg Cooper to bring the season. North Carolina State back on offense, and it's almost picked off. Almost intercepted in the secondary. That was Glenn Sharp who had it and couldn't reel it in. Glenn Sharp is uh, an outstanding cornerback. He's had injuries throughout his career. Actually, 
started on the, in the national championship game and the loss to uh, Ohio State at corner. And he's uh, he's uh, he's got great speed. He just needs to stay healthy for the Hurricanes. And he needs to high point the football. Evans goes back to the ground game and Eugene tried to get around that corner on the far side but Colin McCarthy was there again for a loss of one. Let's go to the studio and Mike. Gators taking on Vanderbilt Clay and Tim Tebow. This is his 12th pass this year at 40 plus. Yeah Tim Tebow finds Lewis Murphy deep. What a great catch. That sets up the touchdown. Keishton Moore, seven nothing now. The Gators on top of Vanderbilt. These guys have played some tight games over the last recent years. Clay. All right, Clay. Thank you very much. And Vandy hasn't beaten Florida though since 1988. Let's see what happens today. Third down and 11. North Carolina State on offense has had troubles all day. Now this play is whistled dead. I believe Bowen's actually uh, flinched, moved. That last play by Colin McCarthy. Right to the snap. False start. Number 80 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. The last play with uh, Colin McCarthy. He reminds me so much of great player Dan Morgan that played here now, plays for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, you know, as an offensive coordinator here at Miami, I told Dan Morgan, I said, whatever you do, you need to find where you are because you're going to make every play. And Colin McCarthy seems to have that knack to make plays. 20 yards against and penalties for North Carolina State. The last five NC State plays, negative nine yards. Evans wants to throw on third and 16, forced to run, being chased. Did he get enough? Boy, he took a hit on that far sideline. He was completely clobbered by Kenny Phillips, but he may still have got enough for the first down. That was a serious hit by Kenny Phillips. He Again, a good scramble here by by Evans, and, and uh, he's being chased. Oh, great effort here! Again, just needs to protect the football and reach out and dive for the for the pylon. Phillips is a headhunter. I'll tell you, second on the team in tackles, he has forced three fumbles. People say that he's got NFL written all over him. That was a big time hit there. Well, again, I we had. Ed Reed here, Sean Taylor, and he's that same type player. I think he's going to be a great player in, in here and, of course, in the NFL. Now it's enough for the first down, a gutty run by Daniel Evans, but it is under review here. Well, that last play was 16 yards for North Carolina State. The first 17 plays for the Wolfpack, 13 yards. So finally, uh, a breakout offensive play even if Evans paid the price for it at the end. No, he paid the price, and, uh, you know, Evans, that's not what he does. He's not a scrambler. I think he has to have some help and, and just some high percentage passing. And with a hit, taking a hit like that from uh, Kenny Phillips, that makes you want to be less of a scrambler. Here's another look. Now, there yeah. is his right foot stepping out. Good job by the... I, I believe that'll be a first down. Good job by the people in the truck there to stop that, and we could see that it looks like he got it. I will say this: the ACC replay equipment is is state of the art. It's very, very good. It's it comes through clearly. It's it's very fast. But sometimes the officials as called on the field, first down. That was good camera work that we had, and and uh, again. Be fast with it. Make a decision. Look at it, and then let's play the play the game. Don't hold the game up. Good job by the replay officials, and good job by the officials on the field. So Daniel Evans and the Wolfpack keep this drive alive at the 48-yard line. Evans kind of exemplifies the entire team's turnaround the last couple of weeks during the. By week, the coaches broke this team down. They watched a lot of tape, especially with Daniel Evans. And it's paid off. Eugene finds a hole over the left tackle. And a nice run on first down will give him six on the carry. Willie Cooper, the free safety, the senior out of St. Augustine, Florida, made the tackle. Well, the, the Miami defense is really attacking that field and leaving some creases, and that's a nice job, a nice call by Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator for NC State, and, and a nice run by, by Eugene. And Eugene again. 
down to the 44 yard line. I think North Carolina State would like to have a little bit of a delay game and make first downs, move the chains, and, and use the clock some. I think they feel pretty good right now, only down 3 0. Jamel Eugene has done the lion's share of the ball carrying today for North Carolina State. He was on the field for 76 snaps last week. Again, Tony Brown hurt, Andre Brown hurt and out. So it all falls on that man's shoulders. Well, he's the number three running back, and he, they just kind of who they have. This is the sixth play of the drive for NC State, their longest drive of the game so far. Pass caught and enough for the first down that is John Dunlap a passing first down for NC State. Well that's unique today John Dunlap is an excellent receiver and it really made a nice play there really the ball was put in a pretty good position by Daniel Evans just to get it away from the, uh, the defense. So again pretty good coverage. Again, this nice completion again it goes down against the football that's not an easy catch Dunlap made it easy the good ones make things look easy sometimes. Dunlap, one of the team's captains for NC State. First down at 10. This is Eugene. Right up the gut, penalty flag comes in. That was a good run for Jamel Eugene, but another penalty marker comes in, and it looks like a hole. And that's the case. All right, let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason. And Clay, that Florida touchdown got called back, but uh, no worries. Tim Tebow takes it in. This is his 13th rushing touchdown. That ties an SEC record. 7-0 Florida. Joe Gans with a chance to play quarterback for the Huskers. Yes, he's trying to prevent a fifth straight loft. Decides to take it in himself after not finding anyone open. Has a clear path to the end zone. 7-0 Huskers. Kansas unbeaten play. When was the last time Kansas was a three touchdown favorite over Nebraska? That was the case this week. I spent uh, a lot of years in the old Big Eight Conference with Kansas and Nebraska. That has never happened. Well, Nebraska certainly it's had its struggles this year, but right now on top of the Jayhawks, who, as Glee mentioned, undefeated. Jamel Eugene trying to get some yards back after that penalty call down to the 46 yard line. And uh, that was actually Curtis Underwood Jr. making the run there. And his first carry of the game, number three. Also, also a freshman. And you'll see uh, Willie Cooper. The safeties are making the tackle with tackles, which is a pretty nice job of the NC State offense. It was just the 13th carry of the year for Underwood. Two receivers to the near side, one to the right. Patrick Bedix is the lone setback. He's a fullback, very rarely carries the football. Passing down, and caught by the tight end, Marcus Stone shakes loose inside the 20. And now North Carolina State is in the red zone. That is a gain of 26 on the play for Marcus Stone. And, you know, fans will remember last year he was the team's quarterback. Now he's a tight end. It looks like he's grown a little bit since last year. He's uh, been able to eat a lot more. Nice, nice ball placement there by Daniel Evans away from the defense. And again, nice run after catch by Marcus Stone. He became the number one tight end when Anthony Hill got hurt in camp. Looks like a seasoned vet at the position on that play. On first down, back to Eugene. And he stood up and tossed back outside the 20-yard line. They'll probably give him forward progress and a gain of about one yard on the play. Well, they like to see that for Marcus Stone because, as again, uh, they have uh, Anthony Hill. They're probably their best offensive player, injured early in the year, hasn't played, and uh, so somebody else, else had to step up. Marcus Stone's done a good job of that. Yeah, he's respected by his teammates. They voted him captain. But he's only been a tight end for six months. Yeah, that's uh, he, he really doesn't understand the position. And his coaches have mentioned that. And they'd love to have him for about three more years, but he's going to be gone. They don't have him for that long. Second and nine, Eugene again. He likes that left side. It seems to me, Coach, that when Eugene has found the most running room, it's come over left tackle. Well, it really is. And, and Mears Green did a nice job from his guard position to pull. and and really get up and lead him through the hole and really a nice job of blocking by the offensive line from NC State. Gain of six on that plate will bring up third down and three. We're at the Orange Bowl in Miami alongside former Canes coach Larry Coker. 
I'm Clay Matvick. It is a beautiful day here in South Florida. About 77 degrees when we kicked off today. Winds out of the northwest at about 11 miles per hour. A little breeze, but it's very pleasant. On third and three, Evans had a receiver incomplete. Off the hand of John Dunlap. And now a decision to be made by Tom O'Brien. Well, I think he's going to kick the field goal, but I think that... Daniel Evans, again, is just a little off in his passing. Those are, his, his feet are not getting set, and you can see there off the fingertips of Dunlap. That, uh, from, a, from an offensive standpoint, should have been an easy pass and catch. They made it more difficult than it was, an incompletion. Now they have a field goal attempt. 30 yard attempt coming up here for Steven Hauschka, one of just three kickers in the country who hasn't missed a field goal attempt this season. He's 10 for 10. From 30 yards out, on the way. And it is no good. There is miss number one on the year for Hauschka. I guess I jinxed it. So it stays 3-0, much to the delight here of this Miami crowd. Miami has still yet to surrender a point in the first half at home this season. That was a great drive engineered by Evans. 11 plays, 50 yards, 532. But the field goal missed. Well, yeah, that's that's a tough finish for for NC State. Greg Cooper, back in the game, number two, running the football out over the 25 to the 27-yard line. A good pickup on first down. We'll call it seven. Let's check in with Mike Gleason again. Well, Clay, playing off what you and Coach were talking about, 37 of the last 38 times these two teams have met. Nebraska's won. Kansas comes back with the equalizer. Todd racing to Kerry Meyer. They're tied at seven. And Percy Harvin has scored for Florida. The last two times these two teams have met, Florida beat Vandy by six. And in overtime, now it's 14-0 Gators. Thanks, Mike. Both Florida and Vandy still alive for a division title, despite three losses apiece. Penalty flag down. And so is Greg Cooper at the nine yard line. But we'll see what this penalty marker is all about. I think they're trying to make uh, Kirby Freeman uh, throw the football to, to, to beat NC State. It's going to go against Miami. And you can see Tom O'Brien wants to decline. A you know, huge negative play. Jot block, number 76 of the offense. Penalties refused. Third down. That's against Chris Rutledge. The big 302 pound tackle, a junior out of Miami. He's called for the chop block. They spot it at the 16 yard line, bringing up third down and 14. Well, this, this is what, uh, this is a tough situation for Miami to be into. They're really there at home. They're just not getting anything going on offense of any consistency. And they haven't had the luxury of good field position like North Carolina State has had today. On play action, Evans from his five, cocks his arm, fires it deep downfield, wide open is Darnell Jenkins. Off to the races, 10, 5, touchdown. An 84-yard touchdown strike, Freeman to Jenkins, and finally the big play Miami was looking for. Well, without a, that, that's Kirby Freeman. He can create, and really play action pass on third and a mile is usually not a good call. It was a good call that time, and he was he was so open. I thought he was late for school. He was. I, I don't know what happened. How he broke down their coverage. I'm sure Mike Archer is pulling his hair out now. Well, before this year, Jenkins was considered a possession receiver, specializing out of the slot. This year, he has turned into a big play threat. Darnell Jenkins was hurt last year, had knee surgery, and missed most of the year. Again, he's healthy. As you can see, he's got great speed. He is a big play receiver. That's something I think the Hurricanes really needed. To... Darren Daly with the extra point, and it's 10-0 Miami. The longest touchdown pass of Kirby Freeman's career. Jenkins and the 84 yard touchdown catch makes it 10 rip. The first completion of the day for Kirby Freeman is a big one. An 84 yard touchdown pass to Darnell Jenkins. Here's another look. Well, DeAndre Morgan was just uh, promoted this week to corner, and he just gets a beat. He just, he just falls to sleep, and Darnell Jenkins just gets wide open. Again, nice concentration by Jenkins and great speed and acceleration to score after the catch. Again, second big play that uh, NC State's given up, and that's one thing that uh, 
that uh, the defensive coordinator talked about they had to prevent the big play. They've had two, both of them result in scores. Darrell Blackman to the 20, to the 25, tiptoeing along that far sideline, got it out to about the 35-yard line. Let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason. Seconds after we showed Kansas with the equalizer, here comes Joe Gans right back, the backup quarterback, swings it out to Marlon Lucky. 62 yards, that's his 56th reception. That's more than Johnny Rogers had. 14-7, Nebraska on top. Coming up on the Sports Center U halftime report, the Buckeyes at home against Bucky the Badger. Bucky's won the last three in the horseshoe. Kansas unbeaten, but Joe Gans having a big day, of course, and a top 25 showdown to update. These aren't your wishbone running Huskers that your daddy remembers. These uh, backs in Lincoln have to catch passes now. I'll tell you what, those, wish, those wishbone uh, eye backs that, uh, that, uh, that I saw at Oklahoma State and Oklahoma, they were, they were for real. Very tough to tackle. Johnny Rogers, he's getting more passes than Johnny Rogers. Johnny Rogers was as good as it gets, won the Heisman Trophy. I think one of the top 25 players listed in, in, in football. Yeah. That was a loss of one for Eugene on that last play. It'll bring up second down and 11. North Carolina State again with decent field position to start this drive at the 34-yard line. Backed up a yard now to the 33. They want a timeout here to talk North about Carolina something. State. Well, it was a good return. And again, talking switching of fortunes. They miss a field goal. Three plays. University of Miami goes for an 84-yard touchdown pass. Now for up to the minute news. Everything that is college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. This online service is a gateway to the best in college sports content from ESPN, combining the latest news, scores, features, highlights, and more. If you don't have ESPNU, go to ESPNU.com, type in your zip code at the top of the page, or call your local cable operator or satellite provider. And if you don't have ESPNU by now, what the heck's the matter with <laughs> Daniel Evans. Offensive coordinator Dana Bible says he is getting better, but more than anything, the people around him have gotten better. And the last couple of weeks, his numbers have started to reflect that. Not a great start here today for the NC State offense, but certainly this unit has seen encouraging signs in the last couple of weeks. Well, they have because they're going against a very fast and, and very experienced Miami defense. And first downs are critical. And they're really in, in this thing pretty good with just a, a three to nothing deficit. The big play without question hurt them, but they're not doing it, doing such a bad job today offensively. Second and 11, low snap. Evans brings it up, fires, caught by Blackman out to the 40. Nice run after the catch. He's got the first down and he's piled under at the 47 yard line. A 14 yard gain for Blackman. That, well, the, the Wolfpack went to an empty backfield. It can confuse the defense a little bit. And a nice job there again by Evans, uh, just setting in and Nice catch in again. I really like what Blackman does. Watch him turn up field and protect the football and make a first down. Again, they've really worked hard, the Wolfpack has, on protecting the football and not turning the ball over. They've done a good job of that thus far today. The third play of 10 yards or more for NC State. They go back to the run. Nice spin by Eugene. First down and finally corralled at the 32 yard line by Kenny Phillips. But Jamel Eugene, he just keeps working, keeps working, and finally he pops one every now and then. Well, the coaches are saying about it in practice, he works extremely hard. And again, I think you can see that. He keeps working, as you say, Clay, working and working and working and doesn't go down in protecting the football. Boy, that's nice a nice spin move. move. Yeah, really a nice move there. That looks like an upperclassman move. You'd never know he's just a sophomore and really getting his first playing time of his career here in the last few weeks. And now Evans doesn't like what he sees out of his formation, calls another quick timeout here. I don't think they like that because you know, they need to save those timeouts. They've wasted two now. They need to save those at the end of the half. They need to get points on the board, and they're a great opportunity to do that. They need to take advantage of their field position. We're reminiscing about the Orange Bowl as this is the second to last game here at the mighty storied Orange Bowl. All right, let's go back to 1984. Speaking of Nebraska, there's Howard Schnellenberger coaching against the great one, Tom Osborne. And here's Turner Gill with under a minute to go. There's the option that North Nebraska has been famous for over the years. They get the touchdown. Then they go for two and it fails. And Miami 
won its first national championship. They went great Orange Bowl memories. Oh, that's a great football game. That Nebraska team, one of the greatest teams ever that did not win a national championship. Turner Gill, phenomenal quarterback. Mike Rozier won the Heisman Trophy that year. Great, just a great football team. And of course, uh, Tom Osborne, a phenomenal football coach. There were some great Nebraska and Miami battles in the 80s. There really was. And, and you talk about the first national championship, uh, Howard Snellenberger's uh, career here. Uh, that started it off really for this program, along with Nick Saban's recruiting before that. Or Lou Saban, excuse me. Evans passes to Eugene. He makes the catch down to the 26 yard line. That's a gain of seven. And that's going to bring up second down at about three. Well, North Carolina State is finally now starting to get some chunks of yardage with their offense. They have had 11 plays today that have been for no yards or less. They're finally starting to move the football. That pass thrown away by Evans. He was starting to get some pressure, and he felt the heat and got rid of it. I think, yeah, I think a little miscommunication there. His receiver stopped, and, and uh, it was well covered. Really nothing... Uh, in the flat to go with the football and, and Evans really stared down that flat allowed the Miami defensive backs to, to break on the flat very quickly. Well this offensive system is the same as what this staff ran at Boston College so no surprise that the only team in the ACC that throws it more than North Carolina State is Boston College and this is certainly a passing situation here on third down and four out of the gun Evans. Got rid of it. Nice catch by Dunlap inside the 15. He's got a first down. That is why he is North Carolina State's leading receiver. A gain of 12 and a big first down. A very big first down. Had it been a sack there, it would have put them out of field goal range. So I think that was a huge play for the Wolfpack. And again, a nice job by the, by the front, the blocking of the offensive line for North Carolina State. And a good finish by John Dunlap. Yeah, they're in a great position to, to, they, to obviously score a touchdown here, but to get points on the board. That'll be huge if they can do that to uh, end this half. They've already missed a field goal attempt from 30 yards. They'd like to get six on this drive. Jamel Eugene, maybe a yard or two. They've got a lot of time left. There's, time's not an issue. They do have a timeout left, so I think they're in good position here. I mentioned it earlier. This is really an amazing statistic. Miami has not allowed a point in the first half here at the Orange Bowl this season. That is an amazing statistic, and uh, they're in danger of uh, losing that uh, that advantage uh, on this drive. Austin College, the last team to score in the first half. That was back in 06. Wide open, caught at the five, still on his feet, into the end zone, a touchdown. Owen Spencer, the true freshman out of Leland, North Carolina. A 13-yard touchdown catch, and North Carolina State is back in this football game. They're back in this football game. An excellent protection by the offensive line of the Wolfpack. You know, they, he has, I think from Miami's standpoint, way too long to throw the football. Vegas, Franklin is really putting some pressure on, but and really a good finish there. Now they're going to review this to make sure that his knee wasn't down at the one before he lunged in. A lot of patience by uh, Daniel Evans on this uh, last uh, last series. Here's another look. Keep an eye on that right knee. Why? I don't know. It's going to be close. I think that's a touchdown. I think that's a touchdown. I don't think that'll be indisputable evidence that uh, wasn't a touchdown. Either way, it's going to be a good situation for North Carolina State, even if they were to spot it at the six-inch line. But it appears to be the first touchdown of the year for Owen Spencer, capping an eight-play, 66-yard drive. And we talked about the prior North Carolina State drive being sustained and being uh, real nice. This one was real good. Well, an excellent drive. And you, from North Carolina State's perspective, you like to see that, especially after giving up a big play. You, you would think they would be deflated to come back and have a drive like this. It's got to ignite the, the NC State defense and offense. And it's really been a, an outstanding drive. They've had two back-to-back -back good drives. Owen Spencer, number 13. True freshman who has been with the team since enrolling in January. 
So he was fortunate enough to get in on spring practice. So even though he is a true freshman, he did get that luxury. Well, that's that's something now that you see a lot more of it. Uh, you know, I mean, gra graduating early, coming in for spring practice, and, and getting a chance to get a get a jump start, especially in, in your at places where players go out early in the National Football League, and, yeah. and uh, it allows for a young player to come in and have an opportunity to play. After review, the call in the field is reversed. The ball carrier's knee was down. The ball was at the one half yard line. It will be first and goal at the one half. Please set the game clock to min two minutes, 23 seconds. Two, two, three. That's unfortunate for Spencer. He wanted his first career touchdown. Not going to get it, but still a great situation here for NC State. They've got it. As you can see, right on the half foot line, his knee okay. was down. That's that's a great photography there. Yeah, that's tough. That's a tough call. A very close call. First down, goal to go at the one. Eugene is the lone setback. Evans keeps it himself. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Well, the last two North Carolina State drives, 20 plays, 117 yards. Before that, they were doing absolutely nothing with the football. They have turned it around. Well, anytime you play on the road, confidence is such a key. And, and I think the North Carolina State team has a lot more confidence, and they should have. They've been very impressive. And, and you mentioned about the Miami defense have not allowed a, a point in the first half at home this year. Now they have. And I think it's something that they'll build on. Uh, the North Carolina State team will build on halftime. and something I think the Miami team will really, uh, really attack their defensive team. Steven Hauschka with the extra point. And again, North Carolina State back in this football game. 10-7. There's a look at the scoring drive. Nine plays, 66 yards. It looked like Spencer Owens was in, or excuse me, Owens Spencer, I should say. But Daniel Evans actually caps that drive with a one-yard touchdown run. A little over two minutes to go here before half. Well, college football on ESPNU continues this afternoon as the Terrapins take on the Tar Heels. Maryland and North Carolina coming your way. It's coming up at 3.45 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Ralph Friesen has never lost to North Carolina while the head coach in Maryland. Wow. That's pretty astounding right there. ACC standings, you can see it's been a tough year for NC State and Miami, despite those losses to Georgia Tech and North Carolina. Well, they're sitting about as good as they could ask for after losses like that. They still control their own destiny. They still could win the Coastal Division. I think after their loss to North Carolina and the Georgia Tech at home, I think if you would have told them that they should have a chance to win their division and go to Jacksonville and play for the championship, they would have been elated to hear that news. And maybe a little surprised. Yeah, that's a promising scenario, considering everything that's happened to this uh, Miami team. Ryan Hill and Bruce Johnson are back to return this kick from Hauschka. Hauschka's probably still kicking himself for missing that field goal from 30 yards out earlier. We told you before he hadn't missed a kick all season. Otherwise, this game would be tied. This one goes through the back of the end zone, and North Carolina State is going to put Miami at the 20-yard line. Hauschka's pretty smooth as a kicker. Looks, looks very confident. You can see why he's very accurate with his kicks, and I'm sure he uh, made the adjustment on the missed kick and hopes he gets another opportunity. Now coming up the half on Sports Center U with Mike Gleason and Steve Israel. The buck stops in Columbus. We'll see if Ohio State can stay undefeated. Kansas? Well, they remain perfect and a top 25 showdown. That's all coming up. Steve Israel, Mike Gleason on Sports Center U at the half. Here's Miami on first down, running the football. This is Deron Thomas. Of course, Thomas had that big run of 54 yards in the first quarter. That's Deron Thomas. I, I don't think Deron is their best every down back, but uh, explosive, big play back, third down back. Uh, he, has, he has outstanding skills. Andy Shannon on the sideline. What is in his mind here with a minute and a half to go before half? Does he stay aggressive? Well, he's got three timeouts, and I, I think he needs to stay aggressive and to, to get some confidence in this offensive unit. Penalty flag down. 
getting back to the original line of scrimmage as the running back. I think the crowd wants him to stay aggressive. What do you think, Clay? No doubt. We're hearing boos here. He is keeping it on the ground. Penalty flag down. Let's we'll see what happened here. This is going to go against North Carolina State. That will help Miami's cause. Well, again, they have, have a lot of opportunities. They have a minute 22, Outside. a lot of time. Defense, number 92. Five-yard penalty, three-minute second down. That's the defensive tackle, Demario Presley. Outstanding football player. Presley's an all, he's an all-ACC type player. Again, Miami has all their timeouts left. I think if they make a first down, I think you would see them go into their two-minute offensive uh, drill. No huddle situation. Clock moving, a minute and ten to go before half. Second down and five. Again, they run. And again, it's Thomas. And again, not a lot of operating. And Willie Young there to wrap him up. It's a loss of one, and there come the boos again. I'll tell you what, this uh, this Miami crowd could be unforgiving at times, Coach, and I hate to say it, but I, I know you know that. Well, I don't think they ever booed me. Well, maybe, maybe they did. Maybe they did some, but <laughs> but uh, when you're coaching, you don't hear it as much. But uh, you hate it for the players. But again, I think uh, Miami's offense needs to do something to get this crowd into it. But more important, to get their, themselves into it. So that's the real reason coaches wear headsets. That's exactly right. Third oh. down at six. Mine wasn't even hooked up. <laughs> Pass is short. Penalty flag came in. Lance Leggett down the sideline was interfered with and this is going to help Miami huge and North Carolina State with a big mistake here with 25 seconds to go before the half. Lance Leggett you can see Lance limping back to the huddle Lance says. Whoa it's going to go against Miami. Wow it, they're going to call Leggett. Well, going over the top, I guess. I, I think Leggett, uh, he's been injured. He's had a, had a problem with the foot. It's interference. Number nine of the offense. Penalty's declined. Fourth down. So now the Hurricanes will have to punt. Well, I don't think you'll see a fake punt. Yeah, going, going over the top. You have to, really once the ball is in the air, both players have an opportunity to make the catch. And, and uh, Leggett coming over the top. Good call by the official. That was number 21, DeAndre Morgan, who got burned on that long pass play that Darnell Jenkins scored on earlier in the half. Was uh, in the right spot defensively that time. This one is going to bounce at the 32. Blackman lets it roll. And North Carolina State may have time for one play here before the end of the half. I think they'll just take a knee here. I don't think they'll want to risk uh, any turnover here. 56-yard punt. For Bosher, that was his fourth punt of the day. Matt Bosher was the top kicker in America when he came out, and kicker punter. He struggled some this year, but he he'll have a great career here before he leaves. An outstanding student and, and a very competitive, very poised young man. He has kind of turned it around the last couple of weeks. Uh, against Florida State, he had four kicks for 46 yards on average, and that was his best game of the season. Well, he has. And I think also he's he's really a strong kicker. Has great range as a kicker. But Darren Daly has done a good job with the, the extra points and field goals. And they're going to run a play. It's Curtis Underwood. I'm a little surprised the handoff here. Why would you hand off? Just take a knee. There's so much more risk on a handoff. The ball coming loose or, or forcing a fumble. Just take a knee. Yeah. So Miami and North Carolina State with a defensive struggle in that first half. It's 10-7. Let's go to Mike Gleason at Steve Israel with Sports Center U at the half. Clay Matfick and Larry Coker back in Miami. 10-7 the score at the half in this game, Coach. A missed field goal away from being tied at the half. Both teams really had trouble in the first half moving the football. Each team punted four times. And like I said, a missed field goal away from this being time. Well, it really is. I think Miami right now is not playing with a lot of emotion. They're a little bit flat. I think NC State is staying in the football game, which they want to do. They're, they've got some young players. They're going to have to do some recruiting to get to the level where they can compete with the Miami, but they're doing a great job today. Miami's got to turn it on. They've got to, they've got to feed off some energy and get this thing going in their favor. It really doesn't have a homecoming atmosphere <laughs> for some reason. It is homecoming for the Miami Hurricanes, but you'd really never know it by the field here at the Orange Bowl. We're no. underway here in the second half. Now, a very sterile field uh, right now as far as the Orange Bowl is concerned. Darrell Blackman, he's a good return man for the Wolfpack. He's got a good return here. 
The speed comes out over the 30. And he's going to be down at the 34-yard line. That's where North Carolina will stay after that 33-yard return. First half stats brought to you by Oxy. And you can see that, you know, just like you said, nothing great for either side. The 84 passing yards for Miami came on one play. Well, yeah, I think Kirby was one for nine passing. I think uh, the thing you see, first downs, only four first downs. The one turnover, the interception. And uh, it, it's, they've got to play better. Offensively, they've got to play much, much better. And they can. Daniel Evans was 9 of 16 throwing the football in the first half. He's going to hand off here to Jamel Eugene, who had 52 rushing yards in the first half. Well, you see NC State making positive yards, and I think that's the important thing. They're they're keeping uh, keeping the ball. They're not turning the ball over. They're making positive plays. They avoid the penalties, and they have an opportunity to make some first downs. Plus, a great return by Blackman to give them outstanding field position. North Carolina State in that first half, Larry, really didn't take advantage of the good field position they were given. This is the seventh time their drive has started at the 30 or better. Gene wants to get it to the outside, try to cut around that corner on the right side. Got it to the 40 before Vegas Franklin, who got the start today at the left end position, brings him down. It's a gain of three. Well, the NC State offensive line is doing a, a good job. Again, the, the, the Miami defense is very fast. Vegas Franklin especially is, a, is an undersized defensive lineman, but he has great speed. One of the top uh, sack, uh, sack leaders on this Miami defense. North Carolina State offense four for nine today on third downs. Let's see if they can convert here. Evans throws it out. It's caught and enough for the first down and a little bit more for Donald Bowens. And North Carolina State picking up here in the third quarter where they left off at the end of the second half when they finally started to put it together offensively and move the football. Well, I think you see again with Evans getting some confidence, safety blitz and a good break off by Bowens. And again, you saw that pass was right on the money. Catchable. It wasn't the, the, some of the throws that we saw in the first half were off out of his reach. A good throw, good catch. First down by the Wolfpack. First reception today for Bowens. He's good buddies with the Miami linebacker Colin McCarthy. They played AAU basketball together. Well, I recruited McCarthy. I don't really see him as being a basketball player. That surprises <laughs> surprised me. I know this. He's an outstanding football player. I think he chose the right sport, Clay. Yeah, he probably did. I'll tell you this. Looking at McCarthy, though, you can tell he's an athlete. I don't care what sport he's playing. I'm taking McCarthy on my team. Well, I think you're exactly right. Uh, he had a, there was a car accident coming uh, back over the summer, and Colin McCarthy was in that accident. Uh, highly recruited uh, freshman quarterback Robert Marr was, was also uh, in that accident and fortunately they weren't injured seriously McCarthy out of Clearwater Florida Donald Bowens out of St. Pete Florida I want to see McCarthy play basketball I'm not really believing that yet <laughs> you don't think he has hops uh, he, you're right though he is an outstanding athlete Evans deep down the middle of the field and a little bit underthrown and almost picked off Glenn Sharp for the second time today makes a nice play now here's a look at McCarthy and Bowens in their basketball getup. And again, McCarthy is pretty cut too. Well, they've both been in the weight room. That's pretty obvious. And uh, yeah, they're both outstanding players. And uh, I think Colin McCarthy is a, is a great signee for, for Miami. He's going to have a, lot, a great career here and probably uh, years after that in the National Football League. Third down and nine coming up here for North Carolina State. Ball at the 49 of Miami territory. Tavares Gooden trying to get this crowd into it. Evans over the middle has it caught by John Dunlap, and he's got enough for the first down. Well, Calais Campbell, the great defensive end from Miami, is projected to be a top five pick in the NFL draft. They've done a good job on him. He's been very quiet today, and I think uh, a lot of that goes to the credit of, uh, of uh, Daniel Evans getting the, the quick release and getting the ball released. Fifth catch today for Dunlap. He now has 38 yards receiving as you take a look at Calais Campbell and you're right he hasn't gotten the kind of pressure not only this game but throughout the season that Miami would like exactly turns goes to Eugene and maybe back to the original line of scrimmage and that's not the Campbell doesn't have 
the ability to get to the quarterback, but you got to think that he's getting a lot of extra attention this year because of what he did last year as a sophomore. Well, exactly right. When you have a player of that caliber, you, you really find ways to help, to block. You have running backs that will chip them. You have uh, help with defensive linemen. Bring the tight end to that side. There's several things you can do to help neutralize a player like Calais Campbell. His younger brother, Jared, is a freshman defensive back. A play of the drive for NC State. And that's Jamel Eugene inside the 35-yard line. Let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason. Number one, Ohio State at home against the Badgers, and they had their hands full with Bucky. Yeah, Tyler Donovan under pressure all day. This time they lose the pressure. Looks downfield, a back of an end zone. Who? TD. Trevor Beckham is big time tight end. Joe Gans, Nebraska, Kansas. Gans, the backup quarterback, uh, trying to play the hero. They're down. Maurice Purify, touchdown, 34 21. Kansas has just scored. Eight and a half to go. That's it. Back and forth game between Nebraska and Kansas today. Evans should have been caught. That should have been caught there by Blackman, and it would have been enough for the first down. That's the second time that uh, North Carolina State has gone to the empty backfield, and it really has caused uh, Miami some problems in matching up. And exactly right, that was a good route, a good throw. Again, just got to make that catch. You can see there, time, good blocking. You're not going to throw it any better than that. You've got to make those plays. If you're going to win on the road, you've got to make those catches. North Carolina State going for it on fourth down. They are four for 11 this season on fourth down. Deep ball, well out of bounds. The intended receiver was Jarvis Williams, the redshirt freshman, but that ball was uh, well overthrown out of play. Well, not a, not a very good attempt. The ball's thrown out of bounds, just a long incompletion, and especially on a fourth down play, you like to have at least an opportunity to make a play. And uh, even an interception would have been better for NC State if they could make the tackle. And you can see here the ball, the protection is outstanding. Again, here, here the ball is thrown out of bounds, no chance to make a play. And, and uh, really, that's a, that's really a poor fourth down, fourth down opportunity by the, by the uh, Wolfpack. Miami gets his best field position of the day. They start this drive at their own 35. Play action, Kirby Freeman. Poor throwing the football in the first half. We'll see what he can do on this attempt. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver and picked off by Dewan Morgan. His second interception of the year and his second in as many games. Boy, Freeman has had a tough day throwing the football, and his first attempt of the second half is picked off. Well, everything's out of out of control and, and really out of rhythm again. It's really a pretty decent throw, but but the ball is tipped. And normally, when you have tipped footballs, they have an opportunity to be intercepted. Rich, Richard Gordon's got to make that catch or at least knock the football down. Second Wolfpack interception here today. This play looks like it's going to be review. It's under review. What are they going to look at? Well, they're going to look to see if the ball was, was cleanly caught out. before it hit the hit the hit the ground. Right. Well, in full speed, it looked like he had it, no problem. But maybe we missed something. We'll find out when we come back. 10:43 to go in the third. Yep. You bet. Well, the play on the field was confirmed. Dewan Morgan's interception is going to stand his second of the year. Now, North Carolina State, we said they had some problems in the secondary, but they got things worked out during their bye week about three weeks ago. The team has only seven picks this season, but five have come in the last three games, including two today. Well, that's huge plays for them. Again, turnovers and... Now, that one was almost picked off, but it lands incomplete. Penalty marker down on the play. Chavez Grant, number 24, almost came up with him. Again, the ball is tipped and probably should have been intercepted. Definitely good effort by Chavez Grant, but again, normally tip balls, they're going to be intercepted. Pass interference, number 52 of the defense. It's a spot foul, automatic first down. That's going to go against Tavares Gooden, the middle linebacker. For Miami. He uh, has played very well this year, leads the team in tackles, has an interception, three fumble recoveries. But uh, 
Miami's flag there for their second penalty. Well, it was an underneath route, and Tavares uh, held him as he came underneath. Eugene on the run. And a short gain. Chavez Grant making the stop. Now, Grant is the nickelback today. There have been some injuries in that secondary for Miami. Carlos Armour out of the lineup. So, Grant getting a little more work today. Demarcus Van Dyke also playing a little bit more today for Miami. Demarcus Van Dyke, a very talented player, but, but a true freshman. North Carolina State trying to take advantage of the Miami turnover. Evans deep downfield, and he has not looked in sync with any of his receivers on deep balls here today. Let's go to the studio and Mike. Clay, we showed you the uh, return by C.J. Spiller, the Clemson Tigers. Here's his buddy James Davis now. Yes, the thunder strikes. James Davis gets a great block on the right side, shoots up the sideline, showing his speed. Touchdown for Davis. 33-7 Tigers, Clay. Well, all right, gentlemen, thank you very much. And a lot of people are saying Clemson better watch out today. Looks like they heeded that advice. And they've had a tough time with Duke over the years. Evans throws it out, has a receiver. It is caught and then ripped down. Well, that was Donald Bowens, and he was punished after the catch. Little or no gain on that play. And stepping up, Demarcus Van Dyke, you were just talking about him, Coach. A freshman made a big tackle there in the open field. Now, Demarcus Van Dyke's a very talented corner, and they felt like he might get playing down as a freshman. Nice job going for the ball, but also a nice job securing the tackle and not, in, not allowing run after catch. So North Carolina State punting here on fourth down. It is Pearson trying to pin Miami deep, and they may have done it. At the one, it is touched, and Miami will have its back up against the wall. Oh. No, they got a touchback. That was a 46-yard punt. It looked like they kept it out, but it didn't happen. No, it didn't look, look like it at all. So we're going to take a break. Miami will have it at the 20 when we come back. 9-12 to go in the third. ESPNU College Football, presented by Allstate, is brought to you by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild son. Speaking of wild... Larry Coker was water skiing behind that boat before the game. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Wild and crazy guy. Larry Coker, Clay Mantic back at the Orange Bowl. Handoff here to Javaris James on first down. The Canes starting at their own 20 here today. Quite a, uh, quite a few times they start this drive. Bring up second down and seven. Donald Bowens just moments ago was running off for North Carolina State into the tunnel and we don't know why but we'll keep an eye on that we'll see if he comes back certainly if they're without him in their arsenal they're a lesser offense no doubt about it but it was good to see him running off and not just yeah. uh, being carried off so that's a, that's a good sign Javaris James back in the game now he's probably more than more durable every down runner on second down at seven they're going to run again and that looks like that might be close to another first down there for Miami and they needed one Javaris James did pick up the first down. That's just their second first down in the last 18 offensive plays. And now a player down for North Carolina State. It looks like Javon Walker. It's like Javaris James is a little bit uh, hobbled too. He's shaking off his ankle. Looks like he's been, uh, might have uh, tweaked it a little bit. Is that a word, tweak? Yeah. Okay. I think he tweaked it a little bit. It might there. even be in the dictionary. <laughs> there are a lot of words that we use in sports that I don't know if they're necessarily <laughs> good English <laughs> words, but they get used. Yes. The one that I like is escapability. Escapability. I think, uh, uh, you know what, I, I, I think that may be one in there. That's two words that's become one. Now, Javon Walker is off the field. And we'll see if Miami can take advantage of another non-starter in the defensive secondary for North Carolina State. It's Darnell Jenkins on the little end around. 
Gets it out close to the 40-yard line. Brought down. It looks at the 37. That's going to be a gain of seven on the play. We have seen that play quite a few times from Darnell Jenkins today. About three well, or four. Yeah, we have. The difference is he's making positive yards. Early in the game, we saw those type plays. They're going from minus four, minus six, minus eight. That one for what plus seven and a bunch of much different play. It makes it makes the defense more sound. It makes them have to cover the field. Look at the total yards fairly even. Nice change of direction. That's Javaris James into North Carolina State territory. A little shimmy there and he broke loose a gain of 15. Let's check in with Mike. And hold on to your seats. So number one, Ohio State, Wisconsin trying to make it four straight over the Buckeyes in the horseshoe. Yeah, Tyler Dowling doing a great job throwing the ball today. Finds his fullback, Chris Presley, for the touchdown. 17-10, Donovan, 11 of 14, guys. Wow. And this is without a healthy P.J. Hill. I mean, why not? Why shouldn't the number one team in the nation go down this week? It's been that kind of year in college football. Well, I said the national championship game may have two one-loss teams in it. That very well may be possible. This is James again inside the 45. And that's a four-yard gain for James. Now, James, not a true speed guy. But he works real hard on catching passes and blocking and, and doing some of the other things. Plus, he's got so many intangibles that this team likes. He's really a leader for this team, even though he's a sophomore. He, he's a guy, even on a recruiting visit, the players gravitated towards Javaris Games. He had a maturity about him. And I, I know I was supposed to meet with him in, the, in, his, in my office. He said, Coach, I don't need to do that. I know who you are. And he went home. But <laughs> he knew he was coming to Miami. Here's a handoff to the fullback, Jarrell Mabry, and he breaks loose to the 25. Boy, Mabry doesn't carry the ball much, but when he does, he is so big and hard to tackle, and you can see there they just couldn't get their arms around. No, he may have hyperventilated on that play, because that's probably the longest play a fullback's made in years, but nice job. Nice blocking. It's like trying to bring down a dump truck, a gain of 17 for Mabry. That's a nice, nice block by Orlando Franklin, a true freshman offensive lineman that uh, was signed last year, just became eligible this year. Gonna go back to James behind that lead block of Mabry. And he's gonna be down at about the 22 yard line before the strong side linebacker, Nate Irving, makes the tackle. We've seen the fullback in this Miami offense the last couple of games get involved. Dietrich Epps, who's a fullback, caught the go ahead touchdown against Florida State a couple of weeks ago, and then that big run by Mabry. Well, it is. Epps is a different type player because he's an H back fullback type player. I think Mabry's more of a true fullback type player, but I think you can see Javaris James now really having the positive plays. I think the offensive line is really starting to take charge of this thing and, and, and establish themselves. Well, Freeman's had his troubles throwing the football today, so the Miami offensive coordinator, Patrick Nix, has decided we're going to run it at North Carolina State. And Javaris James gets another carry. Not a lot of room to run there. It's going to bring up third down and fairly long, but that was the eighth play of the drive, all of them on the ground. Well, again, he's throwing the ball. He's, he's tossing it right and tossing it left to, to Javaris James, and that's that's a good approach. That's, that's something that's been successful for him in this drive, and now they're at least in field goal position. They want to, of course, get a touchdown off this drive. Freeman getting the start for an injured Kyle Wright, who suffered a high ankle sprain and a sore left knee during that Florida State game. Wright tried to practice this week and just really couldn't give it 100%. Well, a high ankle sprain is one of those that takes a long time to get to uh, get well. Now Freeman does want to throw. He is being chased and chased hard from behind by Nate Irving. Got it away. And uh, he's out of bounds. 434 to go here in the third quarter. And now Miami's going to walk on the punting unit, or excuse me, the field goal unit. Well, you can see again, they're, they're running the little the naked bootleg on the third down calls. The one was for the long touchdowns, but nothing else has been successful. As far as the naked bootlegs are concerned, the Freeman's run some, and that's what he can do. He can improvise and, and uh, did them, but of course, well short of the first down. So Darren Daly, already with a field goal made today, is going to attempt from 41. It's on the way. It is long enough, and it is no good. 
So Darren Daly misses from 41, and this game stays 10-7. Field goals have been an important part of today's game. There's Darren Daly. He has a make of 22 and a miss just recently of 41 yards. It stays 10-7 Miami. Now keep in mind, Steven Hauschka in the second quarter missed a big field goal. I mean, it's big now because it would mean a tie game. That one was from 29 yards out. We'll see how important that miss is as this game wears on. Pass incomplete to Stone. Marcus Stone, the tight end, couldn't get his hands up underneath that pass. And Daniel Evans has got to set his feet. He's starting to drift a little bit. When he drifts, the ball tends to drift. So fundamentally, other than Brett Favre, I don't know too many people that can throw and move like that without setting their feet. Now, Daniel Evans, the last few weeks, has been really good as the game has worn on, especially in the fourth quarter of the last couple of weeks. We'll see as this game gets long in the tooth how Evans does throwing the football. Cox fires. Boy, that one should have been caught by Dunlap, and that's a pass you don't expect a guy like Dunlap to drop, but he did. Let's go to the studio and Mike. Well, Clay, in recent years, Vandy's given Florida all they can handle, but it's all Gators in Gainesville today. Yeah, Tim Tebow following all of his weapons. This time he hits Andre Caldwell on the post route, wide open for the touchdown. So right now, the Gators uh, in a cock, uh, cakewalk, uh, 35 to 7. And look at Georgia, number 10. They're tied with Troy. Mentioned earlier, Troy's only two losses to SEC schools. They're deadlocked with the Dogs. Yeah, how about Troy? They lead that Sunbelt Conference. They are no joke. We've played Troy before here, and they're, they're an outstanding program. And very good coach. Caught out to the 30-yard line on third down, but it's not enough. And it's going to bring up fourth and four, and North Carolina State will have to punt. We played Troy here the year we won the national championship, and we were ahead 10 nothing at the half. It was a battle for the entire game. We finally broke it open. Troy uh, dominated Oklahoma State uh, just a few weeks ago, and Oklahoma State's beating a and and excuse me, it's beating Nebraska pretty well. Georgia may be taking them a little lightly coming into the game. There's a punt and a fair catch called for at the 39 by Chavez Grant. So Miami will sit up there. College football on ESPNU continuing tonight with a couple of games. First at 7.15 Eastern. This is going to be good. Ray Rice and Rutgers taking on the Yukon Huskies, number 13 in the country. Then at 10.30, Jackson State and Alabama A&M. Saturday primetime college football presented by City here on ESPNU. How about UConn? Undefeated in the league, and they just find ways to win games. Well, Randy Hetzel's done a great job there. And I tell you, Ray Rice, if I run a four-minute offense, I didn't even score touchdowns, just wanted to use the clock. Ray Rice is my guy. Greg Cooper getting the handoff straight ahead. Back to the 40-yard line, a gain of one. And UConn still has West Virginia on the schedule. So that's going to be a big game coming up. But UConn appears to be for real. I know that everyone looks at that Louisville game and saw that as a fluke, but they bounce right back the next week and won another big. Well, they have. They beat to South Florida. And I, I think this, uh, West Virginia, I think it's for real. I think, uh, of course, the, you know, the running back and quarterback, Patrick White, at the West Virginia, they're as good as you see in the country. Ten straight running plays for Miami. And they're going to run again. And this time, Greg Cooper tries to find some running room along the left side. Ted Larson pulls him down after a three-yard gain. And all the passing plays for Miami have been with Freeman on the, on the bootlegs, rolling out, single receiver routes. One worked out well for a long touchdown. The others have not been very productive. Just a look at Randy Shannon. They have really simplified this offense in this game, a lot of running the football. Patrick Nix is the first-year offensive coordinator under Shannon, one of five new coaches on the staff here at Miami. This is a passing situation on third down and six. We'll see what they can do. They actually want to run again. It's Jenkins. Jenkins breaking free inside the 30 to the 20 and pulled out of bounds from behind inside the 15-yard line. Darnell Jenkins, that is about the fifth time we have seen him run that play. This is the biggest run of his day, 39 yards. Well, that's a great explosive run. You can see the talent of Dar Darnell Jenkins. Again, probably should have been tackled. I think you can see his speed. Again, good job by Cooper downfield. 
close to breaking it all the way. Again, good effort by the NC State defense to keep him from scoring a long, long touchdown run. They're going to mark it back at the 18. They're going to say that's where he stepped out of bounds. But Jenkins now six carries for 46 yards, and he's a wide receiver. He's a wide receiver, yes. Of course, caught the long touchdown pass from Freeman. He's been really the offensive spark that they've had today. Freeman, a little bootleg out to the right. He's going to keep it himself and a gain of about a yard and a half. I think that was a broken play. I don't think he wanted to keep that one. I think he just made something out of nothing there. And you know, I think the running back went the wrong way. Freeman is a little bit more of a run-oriented quarterback than right, but like you said, that probably wasn't by design. No, that wasn't by design, but you're right. He definitely is more a run-oriented quarterback than right. There was a game in uh, in Texas that uh, that he rushed for nearly uh, nearly 200 yards in a game, so he can, he can run the football. Get you an update on that Ohio State game with Mike Gleason coming up in just a bit. Second down and nine. Misdirection there. Greg Cooper. Nowhere to go. Third down coming up. Let's check in with Glee. Well, Clay, perfect timing because the Buckeyes have come back and they've tied it up. Yes, the Buckeyes showing you just how strong their offensive line is. Great blocking up front after they push guys, move them out, plow them out of the way for Chris Wells as he hits the left sideline for the touchdown. Tied at 17, Todd Reesing and Desmond Briscoe team up. Now they missed the extra point as Kansas scored again 48 points. If it had been 49, it'd be the most Nebraska has allowed in the first half in the history of their program, Clay. Thanks, guys. Well, for right now, Callahan still has a job, but a lot of people throwing the things out in, in that rumor mill is turning right now. Deep to the end zone. It is caught, but it appears that he's out of bounds. Darnell Jenkins in the corner of the end zone. And Kirby Freeman found him, but it's incomplete. And that's going to bring up fourth and eight, and we'll see what Randy decides to do here. Well, I think he's going to go for a kick field goal, but... That's a great route by Darnell Jenkins, a post corner route. He gets the, the, the cornerback on his back hip. Just a phenomenal catch. Just the second pass attempted by Miami this year, and they're going to replay this one. You know what? He may have drug a foot and kept it in bounds. Yeah, I think if, uh, if they didn't replay it, I think if I were Randy Shannon, you have you have one call that you can make them replay, and I think that would be the one you would make. And I'm, I'm like you. I think he may have gotten a foot down in bounds. Well, you've said it. Jenkins has been the spark today. He's got it now. I mean, that's a. Uh, I don't know. That it's hard Boy. to say. I can't see the foot coming down. Maybe this angle will give it a really a great more throw. clarity. Boy, I don't know. That that looks like it might be a touchdown. His left toe dragging in bounds. Let's let's see what his right his right foot. Let's see if it's out first though. Yeah, I'll tell you, that's, that's a tough call there, even with the replay. I, I, that may be a touchdown. Yeah, it has to be indisputable video evidence. And uh... Jenkins already with a touchdown catch today from 84 yards out. It was the uh, signature play of that first half. If he makes this uh, touchdown, if, if, it, if it's ruled a touchdown, it would be the signature play of this game. Yeah, he's been uh, he's been the spark. He has been he he is the offense of the first half. It's like a clean catch. You can't tell, tell there, but you. I think this. He does have the ball cleanly fielded if the ball's in the, if if the foot touches before he goes out. We've got an ACC crew today. Obviously, our referee is Tom McCreesh, and this is going to be a huge call when he gets on the microphone. Taking their time, they want to get it right. Darnell Jenkins, the senior out of Miami, Florida, has been an offensive weapon today, running the football and also catching passes. Well, Dar Darnell Jenkins is healthy. He's really done a good job. Again, as I said earlier, he's a, he's already graduated from the University of Miami. I'm really, really uh, proud to see uh, the career Darnell Jenkins ha has had, and uh, may have an opportunity to play at the next level. Leading the team with an average of 21 yards per catch. He is really their biggest big play guy. Well, you can see the speed he has on the touchdown catch running away from people. After review, the play stands as called on the field. Incomplete pass. Fourth down. They just 
wasn't enough evidence. No, I'll tell you, that's a, that's a tough call because uh, from our, our vantage point here, we really, or I couldn't really tell whether he was in or out, but I know he had the ball fielded cleanly, but did he get the foot down? Apparently the official said there wasn't enough evidence to overrule it. So now Daly is on from 33 yards out. He's got a make and a miss. This is an important kick, and it's good. So Daly, with a make of 22, and now from 33, gives Miami a little more breathing room. It's 13 to 7. Six-point lead with a minute and seven seconds to go in the third quarter. They would have liked six, but at least they got some points on the board. Well, I think it's good for Miami, but especially good for NC State also. They're still within one score of tying the game or going ahead in the game. So it's kind of a win-win for both those sides, but especially for NC State here to, to keep Miami out of the end zone. And a huge call. That call could have gone the other way. It could have gone as, as, as been overturned and ruled a touchdown, but there was no indisputable evidence that it was a catch and he was in bounds. Seven plays, 45 yards on that drive for Miami, covering two minutes and 33 seconds. And again, they moved the ball by running the football. Yeah, they almost got a touchdown on that pass, which was ruled incomplete. But they have definitely gone to the running game here. I think what you're going to see, you're going to continue to see that throughout this game. I think you'll see Miami take some shots down the field, but I don't think you'll see a lot of drop back passing. I think it's going to really be uh, spoon fed for Kirby and really try to prevent, it, uh, prevent any mistakes. Is that because what they see in the North Carolina State defense or because they just don't have a lot of confidence in Freeman right now? Well I, I think this I think th they know that uh, they can have I feel like they have a good chance to win the football game if they don't give the football game away. More games are lost rather than won and I think a little bit of both. I, I don't think they want Kirby Freeman out throwing the football to win this football game. So North Carolina State is Darrell Blackman and Donald Bowens back deep. That's a good sign to see Bowens back in this football game as he did leave earlier, went into the locker room. We don't know why, but he is back now. He is going to throw the lead block here for Blackman. 15, 20, 25, 30, has some running room along the near sideline, and the kicker knocks him out at the 45. Penalty flag is down. Darrell Blackman, pretty happy with that return, but we'll see if there was a holding or a block in the back, a 43-yard return for Blackman. I believe they're going to bring this one back for a block in the back. Well, boy, penalties starting to add up now for North Carolina State. That is their seventh today, 45 yards against. And that's really, really atypical of uh, Tom O'Brien's teams. They don't usually penalize themselves very much. And they don't have any penalties. Holding, Holding. going to return, Holding. number 16. 16. 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. Now, Darrell Blackman, we told you about his return yardage. One of the best return men in the ACC. That would have helped his average, but it's called back. So now North Carolina State has to start at the 19. They've had great field position today. This is their worst field position of the contest. Under center is Evans, and this place is amplified. Three-step drop. Over the middle has a man, but it's overthrown. Let's go to Mike Gleason. Play, of course, you know, Wake Forest with that six-game winning streak, but it's on the line against Virginia. They trail until Riley Skinner takes care of that. Yes, he finds his Mr. Do-Everything, Kenneth Moore. Asks him to run it. This time, he's receiving it. 13, Great catch in the end zone. 13-10, Wake. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. North Carolina State ended the Cavaliers' seven-game win streak last week. Wake trying to win its seventh in a row today. Second down at 10. Ball at the 19. Out of the gun is Evans. Little inside look to Jamel Eugene. Finds some running room. Has it up for the first down out over the 30-yard line. Down at the 32. Eugene for 12. Well, the NC State defense, they're trying to, trying to uh, the offense, excuse me, they're trying to slow down the Miami defense. A lot of speed coming upfield by Miami. The draw play, a really a nice call and really nice execution by, by Eugene look at the play selection you can see that Miami has completely gone to the run game it's been a real balanced attack for NC State well they've thrown the ball quite a bit they haven't thrown the completions that they're going to need to throw to win the football game but 
I think Miami's made them throw the football by their structure. Three receiver look. Evans wants to throw. 28th pass of the game. Man wide open. It's Blackman. Caught it at the 37. On his feet to the 15 and pushed out of bounds at the 11 by Kenny Phillips. I've really been impressed by the protection that uh, that uh, NC State has given their quarterback uh, quarterback Evans. I think you can see that he's getting hit, but the protection is pretty good. A nice rhythm by Evans. That is a gain of 55 yards. Blackman, along with Dunlap, considered the go-to receiver. He's got the athletic ability after the catch to do big things, and he did it there. They go back to Eugene, and he is snuffed out immediately. Shooting in to Raz McCray, the defensive tackle. Maybe a little undersized for what you'd expect at that position. 6'1", about 280 pounds, but he's very effective as a run stopper, and it's going to be a loss of three on the play. That's going to do it for the third quarter. Well, Miami getting a field goal in the third to increase their lead to six, 13 to seven on homecoming. Second to last game at the Orange Bowl for the Hurricanes. Come on back. This game is still in the balance. Ready to start quarter number four. Miami 13, North Carolina State seven. This is a big game for Miami. They control their own destiny in the ACC conference. In fact, they can win the Coastal Division if they win out. And they've got some big games ahead. In fact, they only have ranked teams remaining. But they can't afford a trip up here against unranked NC State. And they're in a battle here with this team. They're in a battle, and they have to win this game. On second down, the pass is short, and it is caught by Dunlap. But it's going to bring up third and very long here. We had a blitz adjustment that time. Dunlap adjusts to it. You'd you like to make that catch and be able to have some run after catch, but uh, a nice catch, but not no ability to run after catch because of the low throw. See, Miami hasn't helped their cause with a couple of turnovers today. And that's why they've basically abandoned the pass. Out of the gun, Evans on third and 13, going to the end zone. And incomplete. The receiver Daryl Davis the true freshman kind of turned around on that play but great coverage in the secondary by Kenny Phillips. Yeah, Kenny Phillips is an outstanding tackler one of the leading tacklers on the team but more than that he's an athlete he's got quarterback skills but all the play safety and great coverage skills. Miami has only lost six games since 1985 when leading after three quarters. See what happens the rest of the way here. Setting up for a field goal from 31 is Hauschka. He's already missed today from 29. This is huge. The spot, the kick, and it is good. So Steven Hauschka redeems himself and brings the pack to within three. A lot of game to be played here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. 14-17 to go, and we've got a three-point tilt. Sports Center U in-game update from Columbus. The Buckeyes relying on their running back now. Yeah, look at tight end Jake Ballard on the left with the kick-out block. Opens it up for Chris Wells. He makes the DB miss. He's off to the races. Touchdown for the Buckeyes. And Georgia 10-10. Well, Stafford throws a touchdown. And then another one, Sean Bailey. That's two touchdown passes. It's now 24-10. Georgia and Athens. Play. Now, so Georgia with a scare for a while, now starting to open it up, but still a lot of football to be played there. Troy is an outstanding program. They do a great job. And, and Larry Blakeney, their head football coach, he's been around a little bit. He can, he can coach some football. They'll be motivated, and they'll play the, the best. Now, these two teams that we're watching today at the Orange Bowl better be motivated for the final 14-17 because anything could happen in this one. We are in a three-point game, 13-10 to 10 after that field goal by Hauschka pulled the Wolf Pack to within three again. Well, I think so, and, and you're exactly right. A three-point game, a tie game, a game could go into overtime. There's a lot of things can happen in the next uh, 14 minutes and 17 seconds. Still anybody's game. Hill and Johnson back to return for Miami, and Hauschka kicks it deep, and this is going to go through the end zone. And Miami will start first down and 10 at the 20. And it's homecoming weekend here at Miami. 
Eight new members of the Miami Sports Hall of Fame inducted this weekend. One of them, Randall Thrill Hill, wide receiver for those teams in the late 80s that uh, helped win a couple of national championships. Randall, good to see you. How you doing? I'm hanging. I'm hanging. It's nice and hot down here, and it feels good. I don't know. I, I was told that this is a cool front that's moved in here. It feels real good. Kind of, kind of, but uh, it's hot down here on this field, though. <laughs> Congratulations on your honor, and what does it mean to you? It means a lot because just for the simple fact I play for the U. I mean, what other school can you actually say is named after a letter of the alphabet? The U. <laughs> the U. The Orange Bowl is actually shaped like the U because they knew that the University of Miami would be playing here. Randall, Ren I tell you what, that's obviously you, you still have your personality. I like that. You still have your energy. How about that 87 and 89 team? Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about those teams? The 87 team was, a, I think, was more of a collective group uh, because they had just lost in the uh, Fiesta Bowl in 86. And we came together as a unit, and our motto was press on. And pressing on means hanging together as a team, playing together as a team, and as one unit. The 89 team, we had a little bit more individualism, but we were able to overcome a lot of obstacles to actually win a national championship because we actually lost one game that year against I'm not, I don't even want to say this, but Florida State. No, no. <laughs> Randall, how about some of the personalities on that team? Was, was Michael on that team? And how about some of those guys? Did you yeah. play with Lamar? Was he there? And Lamar, Lamar Thomas was, yeah, he was actually my roommate. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I taught him some of my stuff. If I were the head stuff. coach, I, I would have, have a, I'd station a coach in that room to spend the night here every night. <laughs> yeah, Michael Irvin was there in, in, in 87 <laughs> uh, to, to teach me and to teach me how to run routes. Brian Blades, uh, Steve Walsh, all the guys were around. See, this is what I'm talking about, the you, the you. We are the you. So, no, but Michael Irvin and, and all those guys, we, we, we passed the baton to, to the next group. On third and seven, a big pass down the middle of the field. It lands incomplete. Darnell Jenkins went up for it in double coverage, almost came down with it, but Miami's going to have to punt here. Well, Mr. Hill, I guess I should really call you that now. We understand that you are an agent with the federal government. I, I'm a little worried. I'm afraid you're going to come up here and cuff us and stuff us. I don't really exist. You're not really talking to me right now. Uh, <laughs> Tell I'm, people what you do. I'm actually a special agent for the United States government. Um, I'm able to kind of like move satellites around. I can actually see into the future. And I know that in the future, the University of Miami will win a national t championship real soon. Well, it's been good to talk to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Randall. Okay. Randall Thrill Hill. Here comes a thriller himself, Mr. Blackman. And this is going to be decent field position after the 54-yard uh, punt for North Carolina State. Boy, Randall Thrill Hill brings back some memories. And, you know, the final two games here at the Orange Bowl, when you think about memories, as a lot of people are doing right now, you certainly think of that guy. Well, I think about the Cotton Bowl when uh, Miami played Texas in the Cotton Bowl, and Randall Hill ran out the, uh, the tunnel, and... Uh, I think he ran from Dallas all the way to Fort Worth before he could stop. <laughs> he played with a lot of energy, had a lot of personality, as well as many players on that team did. Boy, North Carolina State with a golden opportunity. They have the football now, down three with a lot of time on the clock. Eugene over the right side, gains a couple of yards on the play. And he now has 77 yards rushing on the afternoon. Boy, Freeman aired it out a couple of times on that last series, but he still has just one completion today. Well, again, one huge completion, but uh, he likes to get some high percentage things to really get his confidence up. They come underneath. It's going to be short of the first down, but Eugene was quick out of the backfield to get open. Made the catch, then Gooden brought him down before he could get the first down. It's going to bring up third and about two, maybe three. That's a good design by North Carolina State because they isolated Eugene on middle linebacker Tavares Gooden. Tavares is an excellent pass coverage guy, but again, he was open in a nice, uh, nice pass by Evans. Three receiver look. But Evans goes back inside to Eugene, and he's got enough for the first down and backs his way into Miami territory. That was a great second and third effort by Eugene. He gets 10 on the carry. I think you can sense that North Carolina State senses that they could really win this football game. They're right in it, and I think they can sense that, and they know that. Again, a nice effort here. Runs to a tackle with Calais Campbell, and not really a good, good to physical tackle there by the defensive secondary of Miami, and a good finish by Eugene. Eugene again. 
inside the 45. You know, this is the first game in the Orange Bowl for the Wolfpack in 25 years. And we asked Tom O'Brien this week if he had any great Orange Bowl memories, and he said, no, heck no. When I was at BC, I never won there. So this could be a first for him, and it would be a great upset, and it would continue to turn things in the right direction for this NC State program if they could get a win here. Well, that's be a huge win. Out of the backfield, Eugene. And Eugene has become a machine here on this series. Inside the 30, down at the 26. We'll call that 18 on that play. Well, again, coming back to the play they had success with before, they isolated Gooden and Eugene, the, the middle linebacker. That's a mismatch. It's a mismatch for the Wolfpack offense. Good protection, wide open. Now, good finish by, uh, by Eugene. 22 North Carolina State players are Florida natives, including 10 from South Florida. Eugene is among them. And he's having a good day. He's getting a breather on the sideline, and Curtis Underwood takes that carry. McCarthy wraps him up. Well, safety blitz by the Hurricane. They had, they, they've got to get uh, North, Carolina, North Carolina State out of a rhythm. North Carolina State, again, they're playing with confidence now. They believe they can win this football game now. Evans seeing his confidence grow. He wants to throw on second and ten to the sideline. Bowens was open. He had a step on Glenn Sharp, but the pass was a little wide and a little underthrown, perhaps. Now you'd like to see a better throw there. He would like to have that pass back because, really, you're getting some single coverage from the outside receivers, and that's an area where I think North Carolina State can take advantage of, but they can't unless they can execute and complete some passes in that area. Crowd getting into this one. Eighth play of the drive. 34,000 plus being heard from. Underneath pass, it is caught. Boy, and the receiver really took a hit. That was Daryl Davis. Kenny Phillips, who's thrown his body around quite a few times today, does it again there. And it's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Listen to this. Oh, tremendous hit by Kenny Phillips. Don't, don't go around number one. He will attack you. Great hit by Kenny Phillips. I'll say fourth and two. Really an important play and completion because it makes a much more makeable field goal. Be surprised that they're going for the field goal and no, they've got momentum. They score points here. The game's tied. You're on the road. Definitely tied the game. 35 yards out. Line drive kick right between the eyes. And Hauschka, after missing from 29, has now made one from 31 and that one from 35. And we are tied up in South Florida. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Is that Flipper? <laughs> We're in South Florida, beautiful Miami. Second to last game at the historic Orange Bowl. And boy, Miami is in a tough battle here with North Carolina State with 9.52 to go. Well, this is a key drive for Miami because they need, they've got to score points. It's not just a matter of running out the clock now, they've got to score points. Hauschka has done a nice job kicking the ball deep, and Ryan Hill thought about it and then decides, I'm not taking any chances. It'll be first down and 10 at the 20. Yeah, yeah. nobody's, nobody's sold Hauschka. They've moved the kickoff back five yards. This guy's kicked it in and out of the end zone the entire day. Let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason. Bucky the Badgers, they tried a fake punt for the second time. This time they didn't get it, and they paid the price. Yeah, Ty Beckman sprints out to his right. Ron Rubisky runs a spot route. He throws it in traffic. What a Ooh. great one-hand grab by Rubisky. Second for the day. Tenth for the season, 31-17. Buckeyes play. Now Ohio State now starting to pull away. Wisconsin without P.J. Hill at 100%. Penalty flag comes in. 12 men set on the field. Five yards. Wow. Still first down. Well, you really don't like that. This little disorganization on the sideline, and that's those are coaching errors, and those are things that you you, you can't have, and especially you've got a close game, a tight game, and again, that's that's twice that's happened. Yep, that's the second time we've seen that confusion from the Miami off, Miami offensive unit. That's frustrating as a coach because those are things that uh, that that should not happen. 
13-13 our score. Under 10 minutes to go. Javaris James in the backfield. He gets the handoff. Finds a hole on the left side. He is going to be close to a first down before Jeremy Gray, the left corner, runs him out. It's a gain of 14, so he'll be a yard short of that first down marker. I think what you're going to see again, you're going to see Miami ride Javaris James, and a nice job by Drill Mayberry, and good powerful run by James, and nice tackle in the secondary. That was the 20th play for Miami here in the half. North Carolina State has had 10 more offensive plays than Miami this half. Well, they like that because I think they want to have a little bit of a delay game and just keep the football, run the clock, and again, they're right in this football game. There's another Miami mistake on the right side. Reggie Youngblood, it appeared, jumped. And again, that's going to be second and, and uh, six for the second one. Ball start. Number 76 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Chris Rutledge is, is called. That is the fifth penalty against Miami today. Rutledge, a junior out of Miami. I want to say that's the second penalty on Rutledge today. So second down and six. And they go back to James. James, what an effort. Enough for the first down and a little bit more. We'll call it 10 for James. And they'll move the chains. Well, we've got college hockey coming up on ESPNU tomorrow. They're going to drop the puck between Army and Holy Cross. The Knights and the Crusaders coming your way. Hockey on ESPNU tomorrow at 4 Eastern time. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Javaris James now with 79 yards on 13 carries today. Well, he's obviously, to me, he's the guy. He's the one, He and Darnell Jenkins are the two players that are going to win this football game if Miami wins it. Wow, good play there to trip him up. Nate Irving, the strong side linebacker, got back in the backfield. And it looked like James had some daylight there, but he got his hand out and tripped him up. Yeah, really a nice job. It had a nice little crease. And, yeah, just a good effort to trip him. It was a trip. That actually should have been a penalty, but tripping is illegal. But uh, I'm sure North Carolina State will be glad it happened and will take the play. Now, second and ten. Durant Thomas back in the game for Miami. Makes a nifty move to get away from one tackler. Now, two. Can't escape the third tackler. The time it was uh, Nate Irving again. Thomas makes something out of nothing, gets two yards on the run. Emphasize something out of nothing. He made two people miss him in the, in, in the backfield. And that's one thing Duran can do. A little quick move here. There's one miss. There's two misses. Should have been a four or five yard loss. Finally, they, uh, they wrap him up. <laughs> I'm going to use the word. He's got some escapability. He's got some escapability. We saw that big 54 yard run from him that led to a field goal in the first half. Here comes the blitz for North Carolina State. Freeman on the run and has it intercepted by Jeremy Gray. Yes, it's picked off. North Carolina State didn't know for sure if they actually had an interception because Gray thought he was out of bounds. But it is confirmed it's a pick and Kirby Freeman's day continues to go from bad to worse. That's the third time he's been intercepted today. Well, that's a terrible mistake. Again, just throw it away and just throw it away. It's obviously there's an interception. Throw the football away. Punch. You've got a good defense and you just can't make something out of nothing all day long and just a, just a mental error by, uh, by Kirby Freeman. Now a glorious chance for North Carolina State to take its first lead of the football game. Freeman today. Now well, they're going to review it, but I don't know if there's anything to review. We saw it there, and it appears that Gray had the interception. The only thing I would say is if Gray had uh, had been out of bounds and come back in and or been forced yeah. to whatever, but I, I, think it, I think it's an interception. Freeman now 1 for 12, 84 yards. A touchdown and three interceptions. I asked you at the top of the show, Coach, can Kirby Freeman do it? Kyle Wright's on the bench. Can Freeman be the guy? And, and if today's any indication, I don't know that he's the answer. No, not today, obviously. It's just been a terrible day for Kirby Freeman. He had the one big play, 
with a, with a mistake in the uh, North Carolina State defense. But you know the, the consistency that Patrick Nix was looking for you don't see it at all today. And, and uh, I think it's certainly a very uh, disappointing day for Kirby Freeman. Still football uh, left. Uh, you know the, the Florida State game three three completions late in the game in the drive to win the football game. So uh, let's see how it plays out. Here's another look Freeman on the run. All he had to do was throw it out of bounds if he had nothing downfield decide to try and force a pass in to Lance Leggett and it was picked off by number 30 Jeremy Gray. Lance Leggett wasn't expecting the football. He thought uh, like we did thought, thought Freeman was going to throw the ball away and again I think it's pretty obvious that's an interception and, and uh, it's NC State ball. Gray is the team leader with two interceptions. That would be his third. He had one last week as well against Virginia in that big upset win. Here's one more look. There's that left foot. It is out of bounds, and then he makes the catch. Now, I might have to eat some crow here because that replay there, when it slowed down, showed his left foot out of bounds. Yeah. Just been if he got it back in, I think uh, probably be, that, that's the call they're going to have to make. Did he get his foot back in bounds before the catch was made? After review, the call in the field is confirmed. An interception, first half. Big break for North Carolina State, and the troubles for the Miami offense continued. That is a, a career high for interceptions thrown for Kirby Freeman. He has thrown three today. He also threw three against BC last year. Again, just one completion today. It was that long touchdown pass to Jenkins. Well, Kirby Freeman is a tremendously tough competitor. He's got to put this out of his mind. He's going to have to do something to bring this team back and help win this football game. Evans throws on first down, and Blackman drops another one. That is the second time we've seen him drop a pass on the exact same play. Well, I think uh, Kenny Phillips is talking to him and says, that's a good decision to drop that pass because I was coming. And, but Blackman's got to make that play. Again, you're in a position to win this football game, a great win on the road. You've got to make those plays. Especially when you're a senior. You need your leadership now. Exactly. Out of the gun, Evans has a man wide open. It's Eugene. He's got enough for the first down, and he's down at the 25. Jamel Eugene with a 15-yard reception, and North Carolina State is banging on the door here late in this football game. Well, I think you can see the... The confidence that North Carolina State has. These little under routes have been very good for North Carolina State all day long. Nice throwing catch. It's an easy, easy play. It's a play that most quarterbacks can make. I'm surprised at the, how good the protection is for NC State. Evans again, deep downfield, and he overthrew Daryl Davis, and he may have overthrown that on purpose. May have really good coverage there, and I think uh, NC State would like to get a touchdown here. They're not playing conservatively because they know if they get a touchdown, it's really going to put Miami in a bind to go the length of the field and, and, and tie this game up. A field goal, they're close to field goal range now. Decent numbers today for Evans. Still doesn't have a touchdown pass, but maybe this is the drive. He changes that. Throws and in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. That was Eugene again out of the backfield. And again, some decent coverage there by the linebackers. That was Tavares Good, number 52, got a hand in it, and I think helped knock that out. Well, they did. They also involved the safety in the coverage, too. They'd actually doubled that route, which is a good adjustment by Tim Walton's defense because they haven't covered the isolation on Gooden all day long. That's been open, and they've hit it. This Miami defense has been very good this year at home. They're trying to prevent North Carolina State from taking a lead here in the fourth quarter. Penalty flags come in and hard to tell whether Miami moved first or North Carolina State came in offside. Miami was an all out blitz. I think it might have been movement by the end. All right, end. to the snap. Full start. Number 76 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. As Curtis Crouch, an interior lineman, junior out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Tom O'Brien has never won a football game at the Orange Bowl. This will be his last opportunity. The Hurricanes moving to Dolphin Stadium for 2008. Could he get a win here today to derail the Hurricanes' hopes that they still have for an ACC title? Evans, low snap, comes underneath. 
Another drop pass. Eugene had it at his shoulder pads and then dropped it. Well, much better coverage that time. It wasn't going to be much of a gain. He wasn't that wide open. They're involving the safeties now to help the middle linebacker, which is a good adjustment. Well, this is going to be a long field goal attempt for Hauschka. Now, it's been a seesaw day for Hauschka. He missed from 29, made from 31, then made from 35 to tie it up. This will be from 47 yards out. He's got a long of 49 this year. This will be to take the lead. Plus, he's got the wind to his back today also. Out of the hold of Pearson. On the way. It is long enough. And it is good. And North Carolina State has taken the lead. 16 to 13 with under seven minutes to go. Well, that's just a huge play by North Carolina State. They feel like you can see the confidence. They feel like they can win this football game and they're doing things to do it. North Carolina State has taken its first lead of the day. They have scored nine unanswered points. The last three by Hauschka taking advantage of that third interception thrown by Freeman. And how about Hauschka? He missed in the second quarter from 29 yards out. But since then, he has made from 31, 35, and 47. That's taking something bad, putting it in your back pocket, and forgetting about it. The good ones do that. They miss. They know why they missed. They correct it mentally. And they go on with the, with the game. That's what Hauschka's done. Done really a great job. And wow, what a kickoff. Yeah, he has been outstanding. Miami starting again from the 20. Hauschka graduated from Middlebury College up in Massachusetts, and he took advantage of the NCAA graduate transfer rule, and here he is. He is a grad student. And right now, he is the difference in this football game. Well, he is a difference. He's very smooth. You can tell he's very relaxed and has great power with his leg and just gets it up and gets it up in a hurry. He never played football until his sophomore year at Middlebury. He was a soccer star before that, but <laughs> looks pretty good in a football uniform. And right now, he is the difference in this game. A three-point lead for North Carolina State, their first lead of the game. There is Greg Cooper on a run, as this is an important drive now for Miami. A very important drive. And again, the uh, NC State is leading the nation in turnovers. They have none today, and Miami has three. That's a, without question, the big difference in the football game. We said it before the broadcast, turnovers, 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 and NC State is doing a great job winning that battle. Give, give uh, Tom O'Brien and his staff credit for coaching and protecting the football. Second down and two. He's straight ahead trying to get it. They needed to get it out over the 30-yard line, and there's the fullback again, Jarrell Mabry, and he's got it. They needed two, and he got two. ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. We're at the Orange Bowl in Miami. He is the coach, Larry Coker, and I'm Clay Matvick. So happy to have you along. This is a big game for the Hurricanes. They control their own destiny as far as winning the Coastal Division in the ACC, but they can't afford a loss in order for that to happen. And right now, they're down by three to North Carolina State. It's been a tough day for the Hurricanes quarterback, Kirby Freeman. Here we go again, Darnell Jenkins. We've seen this before. Progressively, that play has gotten better for Miami, but not much that time. Let's go to Mike Gleason. Wake Forest and Virginia, both 4-1 and one in the ACC. They've got a barn burner. Michael Simpson. Michael Simpson doing a great job. 271 total yards gets in the end zone. Virginia, five games, five points or less. They're up by one with two to go. And North Carolina State, of course, ending that winning streak for the Cavs last week. It was at seven. Trying to get back on the right track today. Good change of direction for Greg Cooper. Got it out close to the 40-yard line. That's where he needed to get for a first down. We have not seen a lot of Cooper today. Why do you think that is, Coach? Well, I think Javaris James has got most of the work, but I, I think they need to get settled in on somebody and let them get, get, uh, get the work and get in rhythm, and I think that's the most important thing. Miami doesn't need to panic. They've got a lot of time and timeouts, but they do need to protect the football, and they do need to make first downs. Well, if they don't hit a big play running the ball, it's going to be hard just to march the ball downfield. They're going to have to throw the ball some, probably. Miami 3 of 13 today on third down. This is an important third and one to keep this drive alive. 
And they've got it. And you go right to Greg Cooper, and he picks up uh, two or three yards on the run, and they'll move the chains. Both teams, Coach, have all their timeouts left, and we'll probably see that come into play. Clock is going to be important here down the stretch. No, very, very important. I think the thing uh, you see, it's very hot down on the field. It's a beautiful day in Miami, but the players are very warm. Uh, North Carolina State substituted uh, several different uh, members to the unit, and I think they're trying to keep uh, fresh bodies in the game. Move a man in motion. A draw play, and Greg Cooper is going to be dropped for a loss. Nate Irvin shooting in from his linebacker spot makes the big tackle now Kirby Freeman had a big comeback game against Florida State did not play exceptionally well but when he needed to down the stretch led him on two touchdown drives including the go-ahead touchdown to Dietrich Epps does Kirby Freeman have that in him today he's gonna have to do a little Houdini act and come from behind fashion today because he has looked awful throwing the football. Decides to keep it there. You, you can't pull the rabbit out of the hat too many times. You know, you, you go to the well too often, you're going to lose some of those close games. And, you know, but you might get an interception, you might get a ball batted down, you might not make it on the fourth down. There's several things can happen. You can't miss on anything, and I think that's kind of where Kirby is today. He's, uh, he had that magic against Florida State. Can he have it again today? Third down and six coming up. Almost a wholesale substitution defensively for North Carolina State. Yeah, they got their starters back in. And they've got fresh troops in. And they know the game is on the line right now. They're ahead. They've got an opportunity to win this football game. And now Freeman wants a timeout. That is the first timeout used up by either team here in the second half. And Randy Shannon walking over. To talk things over with his quarterback, Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator, shouting some instructions through the headset. And Miami, their play selection today 46 runs, 12 passes. But they're probably in a passing situation here on 36. Well, I would think so. And I, I think uh, three of those passes were intercepted. So, uh, you know, not a, not a good day passing the football. But I think the thing, third and six, uh, you're probably going to need to have something to throw the football. They've run the naked bootlegs, and they have not been very successful with it. They probably need to be able to drop back and, and uh, the option routes and get the ball in the middle of the field some. Well, we've said this before, Miami didn't play last weekend, but because of the losses by Virginia Tech to BC and Virginia to North Carolina State, the Hurricanes are in control of their own fate in the division race. If they win out, the Canes would win the Coastal Division based on the tie break, and they would go to the ACC championship game for the first time in team history. That is a great scenario for that team, considering that they lost back-to-back -back games to North Carolina and Georgia Tech, but here they are. Still, they are faced in a tough situation here, down by three. On third down, they get the first down. Well, that's not a passing situation. It's a running situation. Certainly has been for Miami, especially in the second half. Every down is a running situation, and Greg Cooper gets the big gain there. Miami would like to win this game and, and just in any fashion, but you'd like to have momentum. They play Virginia Tech and Boston College back-to-back -back on the road, so they've got some, some tough games uh, left without question. Cooper now with 46 yards rushing, but none more important than that last 10 he picked up. First and 10, ball at the 42 of North Carolina State. Miami, perhaps on a game-winning drive, we'll have to wait and see. They go to Cooper again. He stood up at the line, maybe got a yard. You can see what Miami's philosophy is. They're going to run the football and try to hammer it out, make some first downs, and, and uh, they've been successful so far, but uh, you know they still have 40 yards to go. Well, Sean McCoy is the leader among freshmen this year. Ironically, those two guys were teammates at Milford Prep in New York just last year. Uh, both outstanding prospects and uh, Cooper was player of the year coming out of high school in Tennessee and here he gets a carry over the left tackle uh, another big gain and it's going to be close to another Miami first down 
Maybe they decided to rest Cooper for the lion's share of the game to save him for a situation like this because it's obvious he's got fresh legs. Well, he does have fresh legs, but uh, I don't think they wanted to rest him. If they don't rest him, maybe you won't have a situation like this. And I think uh, without question, he is fresh and uh, coming out of the game now, but uh, he's, uh, he's, he's special. Average 10 yards a carry in prep school, the player of the year in prep school coming out. James back out there is the tailback. A minute and a half to go. Miami down three. Spin move. James into the secondary and down at the 20. Another Miami first down. 11 yards on that run. Miguel Scott finally tripped him up. Speaking of fresh legs, you saw fresh legs and power there by Javaris James. Really a great job on the toss. And Nice block by Diedrich Epson here. Great spin move and watch the power and the finish. Javaris James, an outstanding running back. Looked a little bit like Edger in there, didn't he? Yeah, he doesn't have great speed, but he does have power. He does have running skills. James again to the outside. Takes a hit. Finally, three North Carolina State defenders come in to pull him down, but an inspired run there by James, and this crowd is really getting into it. They know that the season is on the line here for Miami in a lot of respects. A win today, and the Hurricanes are bowl eligible. Well, again, I think in Miami, I think being bowl eligible is important, but uh, they want a lot more. They would like to have that ACC opportunity for a championship, and they control their own destiny, but they have to win today. Timeout called by Miami. They have one remaining. If they don't win here today, their hopes for that ACC title go out the window. Well, that's important. Again, they still want to be bowl eligible, but uh, more importantly, they want to still be in contention for an ACC championship. It'll be a tough road. They go to Boston College. They go to Virginia Tech to finish the season. And they've got a good Virginia team next week here in the Orange Bowl. Last game in the Orange Bowl, by the way. Maryland to North Carolina coming up after this contest here on ESPNU. Later tonight, Rutgers and UConn, a big game in the Big East. We've got a good one here at the Orange Bowl. Just over a minute to go. North Carolina State on top by three. But Miami is in the red zone. This is Greg Cooper again. Down to the 10 and close to another first down. Clock continuing to move. And now they'll stop it to probably take a measure. Boy, they have not abandoned this game plan here in the second half of sticking with what's working, and that's the run game. Well, that's exactly right. They, they, they knew what they could, had to do to win the football game. Kirby struggling passing the football, three interceptions. And uh, so they knew they had to run the football. And Greg Cooper and Javaris James, the offensive line, have kind of taken, taken it personal and uh, really done a good job moving the chains. Now, this is an important measurement. If it's short, the clock will start as soon as they get the ball spotted. It is an inch short. There Tom McCreesh, the uh, referee, the crew chief for this ACC crew, you saw his hand just an inch shy. It is fourth down, and uh, again, the clock's going to start as soon as, uh, and Miami only has one timeout left. As soon as they get a spot in the chain set, a good job by the Miami offense. They're set, they're ready, they're not in the huddle, they're up on the wall. What are they going to run here? Do they keep it in Freeman's hands? I say it's going to be a quarterback sneak. They'll start the clock. And Freeman keeps, and it looks like he's got it. And the clock stops again with 43 seconds to go. And it is a Miami first down. That was the 14th play of the drive. Every single one of them a rush. Well, I think Miami could have tied the game on a field goal, but they're here to win this thing. They, they've got to win it. They know that. They don't want to go to overtime. They've still got one timeout left, 43 seconds. They may have to, to, to go to the end zone, may not be able to run it. Cooper. As they keep it on the ground, big play by the North Carolina State defense as they stopped Cooper as he got back to the line of scrimmage. They pro they're probably going to have to throw the football. They have no timeouts left. They can't afford to take a negative play and get tackled. And, and of course, they can, with a second down, they can spike the football. 
but they're probably going to have to throw, and I don't think they really want to do that. Miami led for the entire game. Until here in the fourth quarter, Steven Hauschka hit a 47-yard bomb. His third field goal of the day. He is three for four on field goal attempts, and right now he is the difference in this football game. Well, he was, he was an outstanding kicker coming in, had not missed the entire year, and he's proved himself his worth here. He didn't miss one, but has hit uh, some critical uh, field goals in this football game. Here's a look at this drive for Miami. Freeman a couple of runs, Jenkins a run, Mabry a run, Cooper nine runs, and James two carries. They have kept it on the ground. All 15 plays have been running plays. And they've got it at the 10 yard line. The Second beauty. down and goal to go. The beauty of this, they score a touchdown here. Boston, uh, the, the North Carolina State will have no, no time to, to get a score. Freeman, the first pass of the drive, going to the end zone. There is some contact down there. Ball lands incomplete. The Miami fans want a penalty, but there's no flag now. That was Sam Shields, number 83, the team's second leading receiver, looking for his third touchdown catch of the season, but it lands incomplete. Well, not a very high percentage play going across the field for a fade, but again, it's a, it's one of those things that Miami's going to catch it or nobody else is going to catch it. Just pretty good coverage here. Probably pretty good no call. Both of them competing for the football and, and a good, uh, good, really a good pass by Freeman to get the ball up in the air, keep it inbounds, make it catchable. Clock stops with 28 seconds to go. Third down, goal to go from the 10. Freeman, same play. Incomplete again. Good job by DeAndre Morgan, the red shirt freshman. As we talked about, Coach, recently promoted to that position as a starter, and he looks like a seasoned vet there on the cover. Two outstanding plays by DeAndre. That was really an outstanding job. The ball was pretty well thrown. But again, just he competed well for the football and uh, knocked them both down. Now, Darren Daly to tie it up. He's made a 22 and a 33, also missing a 41, and North Carolina State wants to ice him. This will be a 27-yard attempt. This is the miss from earlier today from 41 yards. And he didn't miss it by much. Well, he hit it well. He just missed it a little bit wide. Again, this is a chip shot. This should be a, a very easy, makeable field goal for Darren Daly. Daly, for the majority of the year, has been the kickoff specialist, a native of Dublin, Ireland. But Francesco Zipponia struggling this year. And for the second week in a row, Daly has also been doing field goals and PATs. This is a huge attempt coming up from 27 yards out he makes it he ties the game this is a you earn your scholarship kick here Strimple to hold David Strimple on the way and it is good 27 yard field goal for Darren Daly and we're knotted up again this time at 16. That's really good operation. Great protection by the front of the, of the Miami Hurricanes. Excellent snap hole rhythm by Daly. That's uh, that's uh, that's clockwork. That's perfection. 18 plays 70 yards on that drive. Did it all on the ground. He took a couple of shots at the end zone through the air on the end of that series. Came up empty, and they put it in the hands, or should I say, on the foot of Darren Daly, and he nailed it. Well, he did. I think one pass is very, very well. Could have been intercepted in the corner of the end zone, the second pass on the fade. But, again, it gave uh, Miami an opportunity to at least tie the game. And uh, they wanted to win the game in, in regulation. As I said, they, they used it the entire clock. Had they scored a touchdown, North Carolina State would have had no time to come back and win the game. Now, it looks like the game's going to go to overtime. Now, what do you expect to see here on the kickoff? And then if North Carolina State gets decent field position, do they take a shot downfield or are they happy to just go to overtime? No, I think if you get field position, you take a shot. you got a great kicker. He's got the wind to his back. So I think it's a great opportunity to take a shot. That's why you want to be careful with just a split game because they'll have time. They've got two timeouts left. They'll have time to maybe complete the football down the field, get out of bounds, stop the clock, and maybe have a long field goal attempt. If field goal kicker's good, he's got confidence, give him a shot. 
Now keep in mind Darrell Blackman number two for North Carolina State is one of the best return men in the ACC. He had one nice return that was called back because of a North Carolina State penalty but it gave you an idea of what he is capable of and I'm sure Miami certainly knows that. In fact they try to kick away from him. But Blackman comes in front of Bowens and he'll start the return to the 25. Stumbles still on his feet and now taken out of bounds at the 27 yard line with 13 seconds on the clock. Well now you've got a long distance to go. The field position isn't that great for you. It's going to take probably two opportunities and uh, I think Tom O'Brien's got a decision to make here whether he wants to try that or just go to overtime. Dana Bible is the offensive coordinator for North Carolina State. He has been on Tom O'Brien's staff since 1999, going back to their days together at Boston College. We'll see what they have in store for us. We'll have to wait till overtime because Evans is glad to take an E and run the clock out. Well, North Carolina State has played too well on the road to just to, to really botch it late and allow Miami to win it with a late field goal. Take it to overtime, see what happens. What a game here at the Orange Bowl today. Miami had a 10-0 lead at one point, but North Carolina State has been feisty, and we're going to overtime. Tied at 16, ready to go to overtime. Neither team has played in an overtime game this season. Alongside Larry Coker, I'm Clay Matvick, and this really is Miami's season. They still have a chance at an ACC title, but not if they lose today. Let's listen to the coin toss. Tom McCreesh in the white hat is the referee they haven't turned his microphone on here at the Orange Bowl so we can't get a listen but we should take a look at the overtime rules to kind of remind everybody what's going to happen here it's not like the NFL not at all you start on the 20 25 and the winner of this coin toss will probably select to play defense because then they'll know what they need to have to win the game now North Carolina State has won the toss Miami gets now to choose the end. North Carolina State has won the toss and elected to go on defense. Miami will start at offense at the 25-yard line. All right, let's revisit those rules, Coach. From the 25-yard line per overtime, each team gets one possession from there until a winner is decided. There's no game clock, just a play clock. And after the third overtime, you have to go for two. Right. We'll see if it goes that far, if that even becomes a factor. No, it's after the second overtime, starting with the third overtime, right. have to go for two. But I think the thing that you, you notice that uh, that uh, North Carolina State, they want to toss and select to play defense because now they'll know what they need when they go on offense to win this game. But now Miami gets the choice of which end of the field to play. Well, obviously, they're going to play on the end where they have the crowd. So that's a smart choice by, by North Carolina State and a good choice of where to play by Miami. Yeah, the east end of the stadium is wide open. Wide open, right. That would be an advantage to uh, to NC State. So Miami will start with the football. This is uh, the Hurricanes' first overtime game since 2005. And they won in three overtimes against Clemson. They're going to go to the fullback. Jarrell Mabry. How about that? The first play of overtime, and they go to their little-used fullback. Well, I think you're going to see a lot of power out of Miami in this overtime series, and you know they they uh, they may pass the ball some, but I think their mantra is going to be to run the football. North Carolina State has not played in an overtime since 2003, when they went in a big battle with Florida State and lost in a couple of overtimes. Second down and three here for Miami. We're in overtime. Freeman turns, hands off. Javaris James slipped down. It looked like he had a crease and enough room to get a first down, but he fell over. You don't see that often from Javaris James because he really runs well in traffic and he's really powerful in the legs. And, and uh, you know, that's a pretty fortunate play for uh, NC State. So they got it at the 17. They need to get to the 15 for a first down. North Carolina State. 
has elected to play defense first. We'll see if their decision pays off. Freeman going back to James, finds some room on the outside, and he's got the first down. They'll move the chains. Again, no game clock, just play clock from here on out. Exactly, and they do have one timeout. You can't carry timeouts over from regulation play. They will have one timeout if they need it. And the thing that I think, again, you see them running the football. And each team with one timeout here. Greg Cooper coming off the sideline. You hear that from the crowd. It's not a boo, it's Coop. It's Coop. I think North Carolina State's going to have to add an additional defender to the front. Uh, they know Miami's going to run the football. Go ahead and bring the safeties up and, and uh, going to have to risk a little bit. I think sure Mike Archer knows that. Cooper has 4-4 four, four speed. They're going to put it in his hands here. Oh, and he's leveled at the 15-yard line. What a huge play by Allen Michael Cash. That's a loss of two. Number 49, 6'1", 286. Took Cooper right out of his shoes. There's like a great crease right there, but Cash just does a phenomenal job, makes a form tackle. That's a, that's a, a showstopper there. Second down and 11. They need to get down to the three-yard line for a first down. Again, I think they're going to have to throw the ball in this overtime and be successful with it to win. Freeman back to Cooper. Again, not a lot of running room. And Miami really is kind of handicapped from this point on because they haven't been able to throw the football all day. It's it's something that's really out of their arsenal right now. Well, it is. It was against Florida State, too. But uh, Kirby Freeman came through late, three completions. One for a great throw and a touchdown to Diedrich Epps. And uh, again, that was a huge, huge play. Because third down and long, what do you do? I think probably you've got to throw the football. And if you do, then you take a risk. Because you don't want to turn it over. You turn it over, and that means North Carolina State could turn around and win it with a field goal. Because they know what they'll need to have to score. And Miami has decided to burn its time out of the overtime right here. Huh. Of this overtime period. Well, they've got to come up with timeout. something here on third down and nine. And we know up here it's a passing situation, but it just hasn't been a passing day for Kirby Freeman. He's got three interceptions. Last time that both teams played in overtime, we talked about the Florida State loss for NC State back in 2003. Clemson win in 05 for Miami. Here are the numbers, coach for Kirby Freeman today. One for 14 throwing the football for 84 yards and a touchdown and three picks. That one completion was the 84-yard touchdown reception by Darnell Jenkins. He has not completed a pass other than that. Well, Kirby can improvise and, and come up with some big plays, but as Patrick Nix said, that you've got to have the consistency, and that's what they haven't had, uh, haven't had today. If you got Jenkins isolated one on one here, you look for him a post corner move, and I think you have that number eight out here to, to the field. Jenkins, they play a man to man. They decide to run it. They give it to Cooper, and he is stopped short. Well short, down at the 10. He's about seven yards shy of what he needed to get, and the field goal unit will come out. Darnell Jenkins is really frustrated because he knows he's one on one on the outside. They can't cover him. They can't cover him one on one. And again, he knows that, and uh, he wants to put this game away and go home. Here comes Darren Daly again from 27 yards out. He's got a long today of 33. The spot, the kick, and it is no good. He pushed it. And North Carolina State will get the football at the 25 yard line and have a golden opportunity to win this football game. All they need now is a field goal. That's more than huge. That's monumental. And uh, be interesting to see the strategy now. If you kick the ball right now, it's a, it's what 25, 42 yard field goal. Mm, mm. He actually hooked it. It was hard to tell from up here in the press box, but it was obviously just wide. And Daly misses his second field goal attempt today, and North Carolina State has the football. All they need is three. They safely give it to Eugene ahead, back to the original line of scrimmage. I think the key for North Carolina State, they play extremely hard, extremely well, not take negative plays, make sure 
that they at least get a field goal opportunity to win this football game. It's for 42 yards right now. They'd like to get it closer, but they don't want to take negative plays here. When you talk about their guy, Hauschka, he's on fire right now. He's hit for 31, 35, and 47 in a row. And you may see him kick on third down in case there's a mistake in the, in the execution. They still have another opportunity. Eugene again. And again, very safe. Back to the line of scrimmage. Randy Phillips made the stop. Don't forget, coming up at 345 Eastern Time, Maryland at North Carolina. Former Hurricanes coach Butch Davis in his first year in North Carolina trying to get win number three on the year today. Trying to knock off Maryland at home. That game's coming up. There's Hauschka on the sideline getting ready for what would be a game-winning field goal attempt. On third down. They're going to pass. Evans going down the sideline. Incomplete. He was trying to hit Bowens, but he was... Well covered in the second there. Well, I think that's a good call, but, but again, he uh, really no attempt, uh, no opportunity to make the catch. You'd like to see Bowens give uh, give the quarterback uh, a little bit more room to throw the ball because obviously Evans didn't have any place to throw the ball, but why is he put away to give their kicker an opportunity to win this football game? Steven Hauschka for the win from 42 yards out. The wins to his back also. We've seen him hit from 47 already today. The spot, the kick, on the way. And it's good. North Carolina State has won. Steven Hauschka with his fourth field goal of the day spoils Miami's season. 19-16, the final in overtime. Well, a huge, huge win for, for Tom O'Brien. He's never won in this stadium. And, uh, but he has now, and that's uh, that's got to be monumental for him, especially for his team. What it comes down to on the Miami sideline is just not enough from Kirby Freeman today. You have to be able to pass and catch the football. If you can't do that, you're not going to be able to win. You can win sometimes, but not, not often. Once again, the final score, North Carolina State 19, Miami 16. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's SportsCenter U. For more information, log on to your home for the finest in college sports, ESPNU.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Larry Coker and our entire crew, I'm Clay Matvick. So long from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Once again, a huge win for North Carolina State. A disappointing loss for the Canes. Now let's go to Charlotte and Mike Gleason.